Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Virginia City Council Chambers. Uh, welcome to all of you who are listening at home and those who are in the audience today. We have a full agenda uh, for the Committee of the Home Meeting, and some items will have to go into closed session most likely, and that will be at the end of our agenda. I will call this meeting to order. Today's date is Tuesday, December 6, 2022. The time is 9 a.m. Uh, we have a full council present. Uh, no one is absent. So we'll turn this portion of the Committee of the Home Meeting over to our City Administrator for the agenda, Britt C. Bennis. Britt. Thank you. The first item on the agenda is Northeast Technical Services regarding the engagement letter between NTS and the City for implementation of the Soil Management Plan for the Public Safety Center project. Okay. Uh, Jenny Holmes is not here, is she? So we'll bring forward uh, the other uh, partner of many in NTS, Rick Crum. Rick, good morning. Uh, would you turn on the, uh, the light to green? And welcome to the council meeting. I'm open for questions. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> or would you like me to summarize? Yeah, uh, that'd be good. The proposal. Okay. Yes, thank you. So it, it was kind of it was a unique investigation in that there wasn't access, full access to all the property at the time they did the investigate the initial investigation. Um, so uh, there was a, they did the investigation, they found a few areas of contamination and then highlighted the data gaps, or that is those areas which were not yet investigated. Um, but you, you need, so the end game here is for the city to obtain, uh, you have a no association determination from the agency, but now the next assurance that you need is a no action or no further action, but that, Essentially what that does is it approves the of development that you are pursuing uh, as it relates to whatever remaining contamination is in place. And I think in, in your packet, I saw that there is that, by the way, to do that, we submitted a response action plan. And that plan is how it is we're gonna obtain all the data and information to obtain that assurance. Um, I saw in the uh, packet there is the MPCA approval of that response action plan. And they always make a big long list, I think one through 13 items of some of the data gaps that have to be filled um, essentially during, right prior, as soon as you have access, and then during construction. So some of this happens before construction, some of it happens during construction. Um, because the, one of the basic ideas there is during construction when you're grading and doing earthwork, you can sometimes you make discoveries and you have to react to those discoveries. Okay, in order to get this accomplished, this action has to be taken uh, uh, with, with respect to those 13 items uh, in order to uh, gain approval uh, for the project to move forward. Is that correct? Yes, in order, yeah, it always, that's, that's essentially right. I always say it, in order to obtain that assurance, from the MPCA, and that is the assurance that um, essentially seals the liability um, up so that the city won't be liable in the future for any yeah. of that. So let's see a godfather approach. Just when you thought you're out, they try to pull you back in. <laughs> so, and, and, and this would be the assurance that they won't do that. Right, right. speaking from experience. Yeah. Speaking from experience, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, the council? Councilor Paulson. Thank you, Mayor. So I do have a question on the 13 items. Mm -hmm. Are we able to obtain a cost as we're going through that process? Um, as you had stated, some have to be done prior and then some are during. Um, is there a way to obtain a cost on that? And then do we have funding options? Is that part of our funding package or is it, are there grant opportunities for that mitigation? So the, yeah, so I think what Jenny submitted to the city, so, so there's two parts, that, that work that needs to be done up front, some of that can be estimated. Um, I think there's some drilling that needs to be done yet. So we could collect some of that, those, that cost estimates from drilling outfits and others and some of the lab. And then some of it is indeterminate. Um, that is um, because you're gonna make discoveries as you go. So we can, it's hard to estimate the things that you don't know. And I think that's the basis for the time and materials part going forward. So 
The one thing we oftentimes do in those cases, though, is, is take a guess and put a not to exceed without additional authorization so that at least the city is in, has some sort of a control. And can author, if it does go beyond that, you can authorize in steps. Okay, and then I think just to follow up on that, if I might, do we have um, like a set aside funds or, or dedicated funds for this type of scenario? And then in reference to what Mr. Crum is saying, do, do we just hold that back or say up, up to this amount? Correct, yes. It, this was budgeted as part of the project. We knew there was going to be environmental concerns over there. Yep. And at this, it was when we did this study, it was actually better than we thought. We thought there'd be a lot worse. Um, so thankfully, knock on wood, it was better than I thought. So we should stay with the, well within the budget that okay. we planned for this portion. Very good. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yep. Thank you. Hey, on your question for funding, um, and, and I, with, with John Sullivan gone, I, I think part of the idea of having an approved wrap early in the process is to allow you to look at opportunities for funding. The most obvious one is deed. So with an approved wrap, the city is eligible for deed funding um, for the Brownfield grant. That application is due, I think, in May of, of the spring, or you that would make you, that'd be the most competitive way to do it. You can apply for that same fund retroactively in November if the work was completed. Uh, those tend to be less competitive, though, when you're going after it. Uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Paulson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Crum. Okay, any other questions, comments before we uh, move uh, to take uh, action to be sent to the City Council for final approval at the Council meeting? Anyone else? Okay, looking for a motion. Mr. Mayor. Uh, Councilor Barable. Yes, I will make a motion that we entertain uh, the uh, NTS uh, firm to uh, complete this project on the environmental uh, areas that uh, they have presented to us in the uh, packet. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Uh, Councilor Barable moves to uh, approve the uh, engagement letter between NTS and the city regarding soil and management plan for the public safety center. Is there support? Uh, support by Councilor Freelieb. Is there any further discussion? Councilor Biondic. Thank you. And when you just mentioned um, the cost of it, that if it exceeds a certain amount, will that be included in that? So the council would be aware of that? Yeah, we could, I think we could give that to Britt in, tomorrow, probably. Okay, does that need to be included in the motion, or would that? Oh, they're, they're contracts at hourly rate, so we only pay for the work they do. And but so, that language would be in there, so if it exceeds a certain amount... We can add that language is what Rick is saying, if that's what you would like. If you that. could. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. So in the motion uh, uh, that that's you made, fine would you add here. that in in your motion? Okay. I'll, I'll add that in my motion. That's amended to your motion by the motioner, and the second also amendment is also accepted. Okay, motion is approved and accepted as the amendment as requested by Councilor Biondich. Uh, is there any further discussion? Hearing and seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, Thank you Rick. Item number two is Matt Reed, Short, Elliott, and Hendrickson regarding the quote for the citywide GIS system. Well, Matt Reed, our engineer of record from SCH. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, where do I start with this one? So, um, <laughs> the uh, uh, for the, probably the last I don't know it's been a, it's been a few years anyway. We've been discussing uh, the public works staff, Jim Rossfit, now Britt, myself, have been discussing the need to update and modernize the city's records when it comes to your utility, sanitary sewer, and storm sewer specifically, and um, the uh, G, uh, GIS systems are what everybody seems to be using. A lot of cities use them. Some have very extensive GIS systems, some have less extensive, but they, um, they're, uh, comp if, if you're not familiar with them, it's all computerized. It's all, you can access it through your account from online, from iPads, computers, phones, whatever. So it's very convenient for the staff and it's very easy to update it's very easy to modify in the field right there when they're doing work on their system they're working off of maps that are 
a stack of paper copies that are probably from the 1940s. Um, surprisingly, some of it's still accurate, but um, as projects have gotten done, of course, those are no longer accurate, and they try to keep up with it as best they can. They have they have record drawings from all of our projects that we do, but and I know Bill and Bill Coles tried to keep up with the CAD CAD update as best he can, but but it's hard to keep up with all of that stuff, and so trying to get everything in one place, organized, up to date is what we've been talking about doing. We're doing a similar effort with the Virginia Public Utilities right now for their water, steam, electric, and natural gas. They have records that they've been keeping and we are actually, we have talked, Britt and I and Jim and Aaron Asselson met and it just makes a heck of a lot of sense to have everything together. Uh, everybody have access to, you can edit your own stuff, you know, you can restrict certain things, but anyway, so, what I prepared was, uh, I, had, I think Britt included an email. I was trying to figure out how to, how to go about doing this from a budget standpoint for the city. It is a fairly extensive effort initially. Once it's there and the information's there, it's, it's fairly easy and, and relatively inexpensive to maintain. It's just a matter of making updates. That initial investment to get it set up, because we're going to have to go out and do a lot of field work um, to make sure that all of the old maps information is accurate. So that, that really takes a lot of time. And so what you have in front of you today, I guess, for consideration is one, do you want to do it? Two, how do you want to go about doing it from a budget standpoint? And it's, it's uh, certainly <coughs> more efficient if we can try to do it all in one, as I said in my email, all in one season. We've got people out there, we've got them working, we've got the computers guys there. Uh, it's just based on our experience, it's, it's a lot less expensive if you can combine it all into one. That said, you can't, you can. So you need to stretch it out over a couple of years. That's fine too. But I'm, I guess I'm bringing it to you for discussion and to answer any questions you might have and see if you see how, if you, and how you'd like to proceed. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Matt. Before we go to the room, we just said, I know I just want to recognize the Jim Rosvit, our public works director, who has disseminated that information to us previously about the efforts that are being made in which to accomplish that. Looking forward, the partnerships moving forward. Uh, I'm, I'm, I believe it has to be automated. I believe we have to find a way in which to do so, whether it, it, you know, as quickly as we can, whether it's over a period of budget, a couple of years, or whatever the case may be, but eventually it has to be done. Uh, if, not only for the safety and security of the workers, but in order to for the projects to move forward, you have to have this ab ability to look at this immediately instead of bringing other people and take a week or two at a time to try to figure out where everything is at. So I think from that standpoint, the automated system is necessary. And so um, the cost associated with that will be something we'll be discussing right here, right now. But I really do believe that we have to make sure that we have a shared cost between the city of Virginia and the Department of Public Utilities as we move forward. So that that, that bears a, a discussion with the collaborative on both parties. So that being said, let's go around the room, go from left to right. First, we'll go to Councilor Paulson, uh, and then we'll go around the room, Councilor Paulson. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you both for um, identifying this I guess, system, because I think it's absolutely necessary. Um, I know when we had talked, I think Sherry had mentioned that we didn't have dollars in the budget for this. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that we can maybe figure out where we can draw this these dollars. You want to answer that first? Yeah, sure, I do. No, um, Sherry? actually, we budgeted 80000 in the capital, and it's pending on the equipment bond. But there's other ways that we can budget this. We can okay. split it over two, three years. Okay. And, you know, blocks. Thank you for that. Because I think that was part of the big discussion of could we afford it. Um, and then uh, the one question, Matt, that I did have, um, this would be also able to, say if someone wanted to put a fence in their backyard or whatever, this has the survey capabilities right within one of those layers, doesn't it? Um, I wouldn't say to that level of accuracy, usually what ends up happening is we, uh, as part of the GIS, we import the county's uh, parcel data. Yep. So that's all there, it's there for reference, and it's it's very close in most cases, but it wouldn't be survey level accurate it to be, be able to use, you can use it for a real close, you're probably within a couple feet, but if you're really worried about getting a fence right on a property line or something, you'd wanna yeah. still get Would it surveyed. Would it ever be that accurate if the information is put in at some point? Oh, it could be if you went and did a fairly extensive property survey effort to 
confirm all of the plats and, and get them all up to today's standards, you could. It would so, be a pretty extensive effort, but it could be done. So of the um, surveys that we currently have here in the department, could those be transferred into the system or does the system not? Those are what's in the system now. Already. So everything is everything that's recorded at the county okay. is in the system. And so it's just a matter of when the surveys were done, paper surveys versus field there surveys, things accurate. like that. There's some discrepancies sometimes. And I guess the reason I was going there is... Um, there, we had some issues, I think, with a couple people wanting to put some fencing in, and the um, survey costs were between five and eight hundred dollars to get a survey, and they were running about four to five months to actually come and conduct the survey. So I was just trying to understand if that would be something that would help our community in terms of you know whatever their projects would be going forward. We have such a short window for summertime. So part part of the system may be able to assist in that? It would get you close. Yeah. Again, I, I'd, I'd be reluctant goal. if I was gonna spend money to, to put a fence in and, and worry about whether or not it was on my per, my neighbor's property or not, I would still probably call a survey or have them come okay. out and do it. Yeah. All right, that was just the question that I had. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Councilor Paulson. Councilor Barabu. Now there's a couple of things. Um, uh, I've been around a long time. We had started doing this with the CAD system quite a long time ago, a number of years ago. Uh, this system absolutely needs to be done. Um, there are things that we talked about when we were on the CAD system and we had uh, uh, accurate data. Any contractor coming in that needs information, we can eliminate surveys and make them pay us for the information off of this new system that Matt is talking about. So we'll recover money from the uh, contractors so we can put that in every contract that they have to pay us to use the accurate data that we will have with this GIS system. Um, homes and businesses and things that need surveys for certain things, that's in our ordinances and stuff that we that they have to have their own surveys. So we'd have to change all of our uh, stuff with the uh, city. I don't think we should eliminate that. It's a responsibility if you want to put something on your property that you know where it is, what it is, and, and not the city's responsibility, except for inspections, to make sure those surveys are done. Once you've had a survey done, and it's good for the lifetime of that property because the county keeps uh, records of that, and that's what Matt is talking about, the ones that are already there and accurate, uh, that'll be in this uh, system. I'm all for this. As we talked about it, what, five, six years ago, Matt? And I don't know whether we've been charging for using our CAD system or not to businesses, but they'd come in to do uh, work in the city. Street work would be an example. Because they bring engineers in and other things to, or Matt does it for additional cost, so we know where things are. And we've had some near misses with big mishaps. Uh, one was communications in the ground that they hear this last go around, if I remember right, Matt, with. Uh, uh, what phone companies and stuff, if I remember what uh, they almost took out, and if they'd have taken that or a whole, would that have been an expense? So this is uh, something you'll have, know where the sewers are, you know where everything is eventually when they do this. And the costs that I see are $89,000 is the max. Um, uh, I think it's well worth, and I don't care if we take money out of reserves, to be honest, to, to pay for this. But we should be doing this and get it done at ASAP. Because it will pay for itself in the end. We'll just put it in every contract that comes out that they have to use our uh, engineering data that we have on GIS and charge them a thousand bucks, whatever you want to charge them. That's my input. Thank you. There. Well, thank you, Councilor Barabu. Uh, Matt? I was just going to add to that that it, it, down the road when it's done, it will save your, your crews a lot of time too because they, they spend a lot of time right now messing around trying to find things that. If, if they had the information, if it was accurate, it will it will save a lot of time down the road. And when they usually we call and go for state one call locates and things like that, they're still technically required to go out and do it. But in, in the case of designs, when they dig, they got to locate during designs, they can send maps. They can just say use the GIS data, which is as accurate as them marking it at that point. So uh, that'll save a lot of time, too, I think, for your staff. And go for one responds uh, no more than 24 hours, and they they come within between four and 24 hours anyway. So, when they yeah, when they're digging, yes, correct. They're digging, right? mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, uh, Councilor. Uh, any other Councilor over here? Okay, Councilor Johnson. Thank you. Um, 
Because we're mapping the sewers as well, can some of the money come out of the sewer fund? So there would be a little bit of a chunk. Um, so what you're, you're proposing is the actual input of the data. Is, is that what the $80,000 is? Going out in the field and physically measuring things and getting, getting survey accurate locations and then inputting the data into the system, correct? Okay, so then my question is, how much is the system? Is there annual fees? Uh, I, I'm, I'm guessing that see the, the, this program is is not free. It's not uh, an open source software. So I would like to know if that's additional to the eighty thousand and what that looks like. Yes, it, there is annual fees. I, I can't remember off the top of my head. We talked about that because we talked with public utilities about splitting those fees. Um, I want to say it, it, it somewhat depends on how many accounts you want to. So if you want a public utilities account, if you want a city account, if you want individual, Britt to have an account, Jim to have an account, Councilor Johnson to have an account, it, that could vary. But generally speaking, I'd say you're probably looking at around $1,000 a year. And is there an initial cost to purchasing the program? I th yes. <laughs> it's, I think that, that might have been part of that $1,000 if I'm remembering, and it's not $1,000 a year. It's less than that a year. Okay, because I just want to make sure we're not agreeing to have you do all this work and then all of a sudden we have another bill for 10 grand for... It won't be that much, okay. no. I I'll, I'll clarify sure. and get that information okay. for you, yes. And then, uh, the, Jim, this might be more a question for you. Will there be additional cost for us for hardware as we're moving forward, other iPads, that kind of stuff? And, mm -hmm. and I'm fine with it. I, I, think, I think we're way behind on getting this done, this should have been implemented years ago. So I appreciate that we're working towards I just want to make sure that as the costs come up, we're ready to purchase more equipment and um, the proper kind of pads um, that are like, like the police department, fire department have a little rougher, their, their computers are a little more durable. I want to make sure that if that's what we need for public works, that we're, we're purchasing those and making sure they're tools that can be used in wet and, and dirty systems. So um, I just want to make sure those are all out there and we're aware of that as we move forward. Um, and I, I have to say, I appreciate the honesty and sure we can do this in two years, but it's going to cost you more that we can do it in one year. I think that will be great. Um, and I, I think this is a step forward for the city. Um, then we don't have to remember where things are anymore. We don't have to remember which drawer the maps are in. Um, it's just accessible. So I'm supportive of this and appreciate the work you've put in. And, and if you, you don't have to find the information now, as long as we have it by Tuesday, so it's part of the packet. That I'll get it for you. I've got it. I just don't have it handy. Yep, that's all right, Matt. Thank you very much. Yep. Uh, thank you, uh, <clears throat> Councilor Johnson. Uh, nobody else? Okay, so Mayor, I have a question real quick before we go. Uh, did you have something, Councilman Beyondich? Okay. Uh, okay, in a minute. Okay. So this is $80,000. That's the cost. That's the quote, right? And this $80,000 is for the entire uh, process. Okay. So uh, I would like to see that cost shared then between us and the public utility. So if it's 40000 for us, $40,000. I don't know if that's feasible. I see Councilor Baraboo shaking said absolutely not. No, but because I, we're, because but if, we're it's a, if, if, if utilities are included in this, I think it's a consideration. But if not, that's okay. The $80,000 is, is an investment that we need for the future. We'll save money in the long term, be more safe for everybody, and we'll have the information in real time as opposed to waiting a week or two weeks or three weeks in order to try to dig to find where that is. So uh, I guess you don't have to answer that question. I think it's already been answered with a shaking of the head. So I'll move on from there, Councilor Baraboo. Yeah, no, because we have separate uh, uh, portions of utilities. We can't uh, map that all together in one. They'll share their costs on what they what they own right now. And we do, just like we do with street work, they share the costs and pay, pay us. We can't split that because of the way uh, stuff is set up uh, here. Matt, I have one other question. The, um, uh, my understanding was in the end, we would own that system. Is that not correct? And we just buy the upgraded software and stuff we need, but we own the system. So we can charge for this system, correct? It'll be, the, it'll be the city, between the city and the public utilities, it'll be your system, yes. Somebody will be the actual physical uh, account holder, whether it's just uh, Britain, yeah. Britain, Greg can arm wrestle over who's going to be the yeah, account that's holder. Right. That's right. Um, but uh, someone will be the account holder, and you guys will, you'll, it's your data. 
you're paying for it, it's your data. Yeah, we, we do that already when we do street where we split, and I don't know who keeps track, whether I think we do here, don't we, Brett, usually, and then we charge back the utilities, so it'd be the same aspect that we do now when we do all the street work. So I'm I'm 100% for the system. I don't care, if, like I said, I don't care if we have to take a few dollars out of reserves to do this this uh, coming year. But I'd like to see it done. Okay. I... You want me to clarify the public utilities portion no. for you, Mayor? I, I, I think I think I would like to see that because, I mean, if we're mapping public, if you're mapping utilities stuff as well, are we? No, their utilities has their own. They already have the GIS system. They've already done all this work. Okay, so we haven't done them on our side yet. And so, so what happens when we get a, when we get a GIS system? They're going to let us use theirs, and we're going to allow them to use ours. Right, we're so going to share data. I, I guess that was, that's what I was trying to get at. Yeah, okay, yeah. so so they've what, already spent the money up front to get all this in place. We haven't gotten there yet. But. So what are we actually uh, mapping? Okay, so we're working with public utilities on mapping their system. That's a completely separate contract. Okay, very good. Okay. City of Virginia, we're going to map your guys' stuff. In the end, we're going to combine it together. Britt and Aaron and I have, and Jim and I have talked about sharing the annual cost of the system so that you're each paying to get your own utilities brought in. Going forward, there'll be a shared cost to operate and maintain the system, and then you have access to every, it'll all be in one system so that everybody has access to everything and you'll share those costs, however it ends up being right. divvied up. And on the city side, we have storm line, storm sewer lines, sanitary sewer lines, manholes, fire hydrants. Those are the things that we need to have located Correct. on our side. Okay, very good. So then we'll share the, the services together as we combine them. Yep. Yes. Thank and you then in that. addition, the great thing about it, like John Ross, just to recap what Jim Rossfit said at a previous meeting, we can even put our garbage routes in there. So our garbage drivers, if somebody's filling in for the day, they can pull up the GIS of Route B and just follow the map where it goes. That makes so. sense. Thank you for the clarification. Yeah, I appreciate it. It'll be really that. nice. Yeah. Okay, we'll go to Councilor Biondich first and then over to Councilor uh, Friedrich. Councilor Biondich. Thank you. And a lot of my questions were answered, but. Um, Councilor Baraboo, we had an incident, was it last month or two months ago, with somebody that had an issue with the water line and couldn't get it shut off on the block. So how does this play into people that have issues like that? Is that a utility issue or is that a is that, city that, issue? That depends on, my, on uh, who owns that portion of uh, shutting the water off. Now that water, after I met with the utilities and met with, uh, I can't remember the lady's name, mm -hmm. Uh, she only lived a block away from me. She was satisfied. They could have shut off the whole whole block, but that was an inconvenience for the rest of the residents, so they did not. They found somebody they could go in in the wet uh, and take care of her. She was okay after everything got done. Uh, just one of those things. And yes, they'll know where all the shutoffs, everything are when they get done with the system. Uh, uh, is that that's correct, isn't it, Matt? Yeah, on the water side, to the extent that the the public utilities has record information of where all the shutoffs are, they'll be in the system for their people to use. If they're not in the system, as they find them, they can add them in. So, and one of the one of the problems, Mike, was the fact that that shutoff could not be shut off all the way because they're so old. Some of these are yeah. 67 years old; and they can't get them to shut off unless they've been shut off in the past. So. That's something that we're going to have to, in the, in the future, replace some of these as, as, we, uh, as we go. But depending where those shutoffs are, if they're on people's property, that, then they got to pay. It's not <laughs> utilities. So we got to figure that out, and the GIS system will help do that. Uh, please continue, uh, Councilor Biondich. So when issues happen after hours, we have staff available to, if it happened on a weekend where somebody has issues, they would be able to pull up and see where everything is and identify it. Yeah, this is live 24-7 once it's in there. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you. Uh, thank you, uh, Councilor Biondich. Uh, so, uh, Councilor Friedley. So we purchased the software. It's downloaded into SEH computers. Would you then be the administrator of that programming? To the extent that you guys want to do it, you're more than welcome to take that on because it is an option. It's, it's if you have somebody that's knowledgeable and, and, and ends up that is something you could consider. Otherwise, we can you call us up, say, hey, would you move this curb stop from point A to point B or move this manhole? And we can move it. It's just I mean, like, so Jim would be able to collaboratively call up whatever information he needs oh, yes. on the system as well as you and yes. any other 
it would be helpful to our new community planner as well, I'm certain. Yes. Any, anybody that wants to call it up and look at it, it, it depends on what level you want the editing. Anybody can have a, have a viewing capability fairly simply. If you get into the editing, it gets a little bit... Um, Depends on how much you trust everybody. I shouldn't even say trust is the wrong word. People might go into the system and, and move something and not realize they did it, things like that. So you've got to be a little bit careful about who has editing capabilities. And that's but a, you know, there's going to be glitches regardless when you're for doing sure. technology. So I'm just wondering who that will be as the go-to guy that's going to You can be call me or us. We'll fix it. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, thank you, uh, Councilor Freely. Okay, um, so uh, if there are other, any other comments uh, from the council, we do. Uh, Councilor Paulson. I'd, I'll make a motion to, um, I guess, allow um, SEH to proceed with uh, the formal quote and break down uh, going forward for the next city council meeting for the new GIS system. Okay, uh, moved by Councilor Paulson to move this forward to the next council meeting. Is there support? I'll support, Mayor. Support by Councilor Baraboo. Is there any further discussion? Hearing and seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Matt. Okay, thank you. Uh, Britt, uh, if we could, I, I, uh, I'd like to, uh, uh, there's uh, uh, three uh, ladies sitting in the audience. Are you here for a specific uh, issue that you'd like to address the council on? Uh, uh, that's on the agenda? Correct. Right, item number 4, A. I'm sorry, what? It's 4A that they're here for. It's 4A? Yep. Okay, we're close. We're close. Okay. One more. Coming soon. Yep. Thank, thank you, Britt. Um, the next item is Mr. Pat's word, Pat Words, Cross Anderson, regarding the request to, for approval for a request for proposals for the Virginia Building Demolition Project for the Public Safety Center. And on the table is the actual packets. I did email them to you because they are 100 and some pages. But if anybody would like to review the packet, it's on the table. Yeah, I, I painstakingly read through this uh, and it didn't make it all the way to the end. So I, I admit that. So, uh, Mr. Wirtz, welcome to the council meeting and uh, uh, give us info on, uh, we're exciting that we're moving forward with the request for proposal for demo. Yep, good morning. So it's a packet of uh, some very intense uh, reading information for you on your board. So what we're looking to do is, you know, once we get full approval for it, we're going to advertise for bid uh, for two weeks after the December 13th council meeting. And what that is going to be for is right now there's, there's roughly 32 houses that have been procured and it could get demoed out. So the plan would be to bid those out and then have an ad alternate to go through a per unit price for each house to go through. So once they do get procured, we know what those values are so that budget can be set. Um, so we'd advertise out for the two to three week period, have a mandatory walkthrough on December 22nd, receive bids on January 5th, and then once you know, get a full council approval, we get contracts in place and everything, we'd plan to start roughly middle of February. What that would include is basically demo all the houses, um, get the foundations out, cap the utilities back a little bit. I know the cities are disconnected a lot of the gas and those kind of components right now. I've been working with Aaron to get those air nasals in, getting those mapped out, and then fill the hole in, and then uh, kind of go from there. One of the things that is going to be coming up as well is there's going to be abatement in some of the houses. Braun has done the report as far as they can. I know Braun is going to be sending over a proposal to kind of coordinate that along with IEA. That's going to be coming up. That's separate. That's direct with the city, not with us, but we'll help coordinate it all and do all that. So kind of the first steps is they abate it and then we turn it on the houses. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. Okay. Uh, thank you, Beth. So the goal and the objective is to look at... Uh, um, uh, uh, approving the advertisement for request for proposals for the demolition for the public safety building of the structures. And then uh, then uh, uh, this will be forward to the council meeting on the 13th for final approval. Then on the 14th, you send it on the street for advertisements, give it a couple weeks, and then move forward from there. Is that kind of the timeline? That's correct. Okay, thank you. Uh, council, uh, Councilor Freely. So we've completed the purchase of all of these properties now? We're down to five houses, five structures. Yet to be to be left that are left to be purchased. So what they're going to do is we're going to do a bid for the ones we do own, and then we'll add alternate the other five. So as as they become our property, we'll we'll work on the demolition of them. And not, I mean, if I have any concerns, I'm realizing that in this process there's multiple steps that need to be taken, but they are kind of overlapping and intertwining. So case in point, for example, 
should NTS uncover something that was unforeseen that's going to be significant to hold on, we can't continue until this is taken care of? I mean, is that a potential? That um, well, the good news is is where they did find that, that's like in the southeast corner of the proper area, is nowhere near where we're going to be doing it. Huh? Oh. So that's a right. So yeah, so right now to go through these areas the where it's spots at. have already been determined in a sense. Yes, people. correct. All right, that's a good thing. All right, that's okay. what I needed. To know. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councilor Freely. Okay, uh, anybody else? Councilor Paulson. Thank you, Mayor. So when we go out for these, uh, for the request for quotes, for bids, um, are there still the, in the past, um, when we've done demolition, the, uh, I guess the contractor that was awarded the bid then would be able to take all the salvageable items or whatever, and that's part of what we're going to put together within this it's going to be to their discretion because they have a certain timeline. I don't want this to drag out for seven months. So we're going to leave a window to go through. It was talking about some of the guys that do a lot of the bidding contractors in the area. They say roughly two, two days to get the houses tore down. You know, so it'll take approximately three months to get them all done, you know, depending on any issues. So we're going to have a like three month window to get the work complete. If they can salvage a bunch of materials to go through within that three months, that's up to them. But so would you recommend putting that language in is what I'm asking. Does that delay us if we or, or they're just going to do that anyway as they're hauling the material off? Do, yeah, as they haul the material off. So they won't actually physically be going house to house prior to that and pulling out any salvageable item? More likely not, no. Okay. And then the other side of that, is there language that then indemnifies the city in terms of asbestos or any lead or anything that they might find as they are... Um, so that was part of to go through. I mentioned to go through. So Braun did the asbestos survey report, yep. which that is actually attached to that bidding document to go through listing of all the where the asbestos is found. So Braun and IEA has put together a proposal to coordinate the bids, and then we'll take care of the abatement. So once we learned that, we'll say there was asbestos mastic for the glue on the floor, needs to be abated. That'll be done first, cleared, and then the houses will be tore down. What so, today, Pat's asking for demolition of the actual houses. We'll be coming to you as soon as I have the, the documentation for the approval of the contract for the abatement. Because now that we know, okay, minus those five houses, where the so they, hazardous material is. So there's two different bids going on at the same time. So they will physically go in, though, to the home and assess, or, or Bron has already done Bron that. Bron has already done that. Okay. Yes. I think we had that report. Yes. I'm almost sure we have. Yep. Okay. And then, so that the liability then rests on the contractor that's going to be awarded that bid to properly dispose of the hazardous material. That's correct. And the liability rests on that contractor. When they bait it all to go through, it's in sealed containers, brought to certified <laughs> abatement landfill, and then you have a, everything's documented to go through, and knowing this package from House 16 had basically it's all documented. And, okay. So. And then, so that language will be in, when we put out our RFP, that language will be in the RFP so the contractor understands the obligation. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, any other comments, questions before I ask for council action? Seeing none, looking for council action regarding uh, this item on the agenda, Pat Wirtz, Carl Sanderson, to approve the advertisement for the request for proposals for the Virginia Public Safety Demolition Project. Moved. Moved to approve uh, by Councilor Freedom. Is there support? Support. Uh, support by Councillor Baraboo. Is there any further discussion? Right. Uh, hearing, uh, Councillor Freely. What was the preliminary budget anticipation for what we may incur the cost on this? Okay. <laughs> yes, I do. Do you remember what the original budget was, Pat? Right around a million dollars. million dollars, yep. yep. And then I will be bringing to the council meeting next week the resolution authorizing us to apply for an IRRRB grant for half of what the budgeted cost is. So we'll be applying for a grant for $500,000 for this project. Um, I just didn't have it ready for today, but I had spoken to IRRR and I have given them the information that Pat's given me and we've started that process, that preliminary discussion about a grant. So if it comes in at 3.5, we're going to be... We're going to have a serious talk. We'll have some problems. <laughs> yes, we'll have some, yes. <laughs> we'll be, we'll be right really back here talking about it. <laughs> if that happens, I'm not going to come to the next meeting. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, yeah. And it is imperative we move forward as quickly as possible because we had that discussion early on about with the IEEE about additional assistance with respect to this project. So uh, uh, let's get moving on this. So it's been moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? Uh, hearing and seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Wirtz. Everyone. Thank you. And finally, item number 4A is review the options for the fitness center instructors at the Iron Trail Motors Event Center. Good morning, Council. Um, if you remember back a few meetings ago, you directed us to hold some public meetings regarding um, the fitness center operations as far as classes as far as it pertains to classes. Uh, we've had two public meetings. Jim Hunt um, conducted those meetings. They were each attended by um, roughly or just less than 10 people per meeting. Uh, and we have also taken this issue back to the Park and Recreation Commission for further consideration. If you remember way back when, when we were talking about the fitness center, um, and we had a, I believe it was a special called meeting or a community of the whole meeting that was actually at the event center where we discussed the different pricing structures and operational structures. The council made the decision to follow the Park and Rec Commission's recommendation as far as classes go of going with the model of renting the room out. Um, and as a council, you set that rate at $20 for a one hour class. Now that one hour class includes basically a two hour window. 30 minutes for setup, your one hour class, 30 minutes for cleanup. This way we don't have classes back to back, it allows the instructor time to um, do the setup, to um, clean up for members of the class to congregate either before or after the class. Um, and we have had some interest in those classes. In fact, earlier this week, I had a young gentleman in our office that brought us his certificate of insurance. And he's preparing to, after the start of the year, to start offering some fitness classes um, with that model. Um, I will let Jim. Um, turn it over to Jim to discuss what went on in, or the discussions that took place in our public meetings that we've had here in the past month. Good morning, everyone. Uh, we did hold two hearings. Uh, there were counselors involved in both of those meetings, and uh, Britt was involved in the second one. As Brian said, we had about seven to 10 people in attendance. And the, the request that we hear, particularly in the initial meeting, was that the instructors would like to come on as part-time or uh, employees and to provide that service to our clients of the fitness center. We have talked about that. Uh, Brian kind of laid out the guidelines or what this council has approved. And then we met a second time uh, to, to the uh, audience of about the same people. One idea that was brought up uh, in the second meeting is that the members in attendance of the two meetings that we had um, would just kind of group together themselves and use the um, a fitness room as as members of the fitness and they would organize themselves and as members of the fitness center they would use that fitness room accordingly for stretching taekwondo uh, zumba etc um, there is still also the idea of being uh, of signing uh, employment agreements with a couple or a few different instructors that are still thinking that that might be the way that they can provide a good service and provide their, uh, their business uh, some ability to move and book uh, memberships for the fitness room. So that's a long-winded description. Anybody have any questions about that? Okay, we'll start from left to right. First, Councilor Freely, then Councilor Barabo. And then over to Councilor Johnson, Councilor Freely. So what model are you guys leaning in the direction of employees versus contractors? We're leaning in the direction that has been approved by the city council in the $20 for up to two hours of room space 
uh, that they can rent that room without a contract and without any type of employment through the city seems to, at this point, make the best sense for our operation. That is also still the recommendation of the Park and Rec Commission. Um, we discussed this at our park, November Park and Rec Commission meeting um, with all the different options and their recommendation is that we not change our mode of operation at <clears throat> this point. Um, it was those contractors though that suggested the potential for becoming employees of the city then? Did correct, I, yes. But we've opted to not go in that direction at this point? Correct. From your recommendation, which is my preference as well. The only concern there would be in continuity of instruction. I mean, I'm assuming these people have an interest to be there and are going to continue to provide those services, whether they're an employee or not. It appears they have that kind of interest level. Yes. Yes, there seems to be an interest. Has there been a schedule already established then, or are we still waiting for us to make the decision to get this rolling? There had no, no instructor has come forward and booked the room yet for instructions based on the, I, uh, based on the framework that was approved in here for the $20 for up to two hours. The sooner we move on this, the sooner we'll have people in there utilizing it the way it should be. Yes. Uh, thank you, uh, Councillor uh, Friedlieb. Councillor Baraboo? Uh, I'm also in the aspect that we should use uh, contract individuals, uh, not employees. Every time we started to messing with additional employees across the city a lot more uh, dollars. This way, the independent contractor has to provide their own insurance, other things when they use, utilize and do those uh, things. They have the option of charging whatever they want for their classes, so uh, uh, they can pick up, uh, if it's five bucks extra, they can pick up their costs of, uh, of all their... Can I ask a question? Sure. You referred to independent contractor. contractor. Um, it, when I hear you say that, I'm hearing you say that we are hiring an independent contractor. That's not how we are currently set up. We're currently set up for them to rent a room from us and run their own program, and we're completely hands off. So, so are you telling me then that if they rent that room, are you going to have the insurance uh, liabilities and all the other stuff from the rental pro the, pro the young, contract that they sign? The young man sign? who came to speak with me this week that is looking at doing classes in the room uh, presented me with his million and, million and a half dollar insurance policy, also naming the city and the event center as additionally insured. Um, and so yes, um, as a renter that's doing a fitness class, they would be providing us the insurance. Okay. Also, if we were to go the route of hiring independent contractors, such as uh, one of the next things that's on the agenda are figure skating coaches. Those individuals that we hire as independent contractors, they also have to provide their own insurance. Okay, you've answered uh, my question because I don't want us getting stuck with these Correct. costs unless we absolutely have to. We're, we're always in a, a position because we own the buildings uh, of insurance and liabilities, even though people have separate but uh, at least that comes out first, and we might end up secondary. But I'm okay with uh, the way you're going with it, Brian and Jim. Uh, well, thank you, Councilor Bearable. Councilor Johnson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I was at the first meeting, was unable to make the second meeting, um, but the thing that I heard the most from the first meeting from actual fitness instructors was they were concerned about the logistics of them managing fees and schedules and that kind of stuff. And it was about, uh, one of the questions I had asked was, uh, of, the, of the instructors was, are you sure that your customers are understanding the value of what they're getting? Um, they were concerned about the $20 rental fee. They were concerned about having their own insurance because they only charge a minimal amount of money for their classes. Um, and so I, I just wanna bring that up that, that what the expectation is, is that this is going to be very inexpensive for folks. Um, and in reality, there need, may need to be some, some adjustment to that way of thinking. Um, 
I, I too am not okay with with having employees, uh, additional employees. I think that um, it takes away from what what the fitness instructors can offer the general public. Um, the um, and, and I appreciate the independent contractor clarification because an independent contractor can decide when and where they're going to work. We, we can't dictate that you, we have this slot open, you have to work between three and five. That, that independent contractor that crosses that line between employee and independent contractor. So um, I think that we're good staying away from that. Uh, a question is, is you had said that uh, at the last meeting they brought up about a group of coming and, and just doing their own thing for, would that be something we would need to approve as an option that for $20 a group could rent that space as a rental? Um, how would that look if a group of people wanted to come in? Currently, do you, do you, go ahead. Currently um, it's all, that's already taking place. Um, this morning at 7 a.m. when I was walking through the track, I was um, walking around a group of individuals that had gathered to do a walking class on their own, um, and they were walking and stretching throughout that class um, and doing the stairs. Um, they had an individual that was leading them. Um, and. Our facility is 100% hands off. Would be basically be like if um, you as city councilors decided after a stressful committee of the whole meeting that you're all members of the fitness center and you wanted to come over and do a weightlifting competition and see who could lift the most weights. Um, something like that. That They are just individuals <laughs> that are gathering together, um, utilizing um, well, these individuals were on the walking track, which no membership is required. Um, but the talk was um, the talk that took place in an earlier meeting is for those individuals that have have a fitness membership, get some access to the weight room and the fitness room, they could just go into the fitness room as five to six individuals together, stretch and use the equipment in there on their own as a organized group of people. Does that answer your question? It does. I guess I'm looking for the ability for them to reserve that space to do that. Do we have the ability for one of our fitness members to reserve whatever that looks like, whether there's a fee or not? And then they, because if they were doing that as a group and they had a leader, there's still no liability to the city if they're, they've, they as a group, someone has rented that space and whatever they do in that space, as long as it falls within what's allowed in, in the center. So is there, would they have the ability to rent that space privately and not as an, I'm trying to figure out if, if they're gonna do that, what, 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 um, what constraints are there for me to come in while they're having their class and use some of the other equipment or do my own thing in the room while they're having their organized, not rented time. At the, la at the last meeting that I was at, the one that I did go to, we did mention that, that if everybody in the room has a membership, they cannot, and they didn't reserve the room, they can't make it exclusive, it has to be inclusive. And they, they actually assured me that I could come walk with them every morning at seven if I wanted, because <laughs> they invite everybody, everybody's open to come on in. They don't mind. And if they are, they are doing a class and somebody wants to come and use the weights, they'll, they don't mind. Come on in. I mean, that's fine. That's what the room was for, was to everybody to use. Right. And so we did tell them that. If you all get memberships and decide to use that room as your day that you're doing weights today, just make sure to keep it inclusive and you don't block anybody from coming home. And I appreciate that. Thank you very much, Britt, because I, I think that's the simplest answer for what the citizens at the first meeting I were at were looking at. Um, I still am supportive of our ability to rent it for $20 for two hours. That's $10 an hour. Um, I think that's the best way, and we just balance that. Um, I'm, I'm not supportive of us acquiring more employees. Um, and, and based on what I heard from the fitness instructors, that we would still have to schedule them, them and they may not be able to 
work when we schedule them because that would be part of the employment agreement is we're going to have scheduled meetings on our fitness classes Mondays and Tuesdays at 9 p.m. You need to work. And they would not necessarily have the option to say, no, I'm not going to work that night. Mm -hmm. So um, I think we leave it alone and we do just encourage um, folks to gather and, and, um, and, and however that's going to work for them. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Councilor Johnson. Uh, Councilor Biondich. Thank you. And I, I did attend both meetings. Um, the first one, there were an awful lot of questions. The second meeting, um, I was pleasantly surprised. Um, we did talk about independent contractors, but I don't think they were aware that when we hire, like they're skating, that if people sign up, the money comes to the city, correct? Yes. And they just get a base wage. The way they're doing it, I mean, it's, it's kind of nice because everybody can go at whatever time. They're not in the way of the, in the walking path. They keep their, their space to themselves. Um, and one of the big things is, I said at the first meeting, was when this building was built and we partnered with the Y, we had no um, issues with workouts because everybody was going to be doing that part at the Y. So when the Y closed, that put the burden back on us. Um, I don't think it should be a burden. I think the space is there. I think, um, I don't know that we really need to do anything. Do you, do you feel that, Jim, from our last meeting? Correct. With that third idea that came up of loosely gathering and using the facility as members, that seems to, make, that seems to have made sense with the audience that was in attendance in that second meeting. And my, I also add the ladies behind us are here to hear what we're talking about, and maybe they have something to add to this. I do not know. That was going to be my question. If we could ask if the members that showed up today, if you have any input, is that okay? Sure. Uh, Aaron, before, you, before you come up, <laughs> I just want to take one quick comment so that you have everybody's perspective, including mine as well, and then we'll get, please you know, have you come up and, and uh, talk about what you'd like to do. For me, you know, for first question is, are the instructors members of the fitness center? Do they have a membership? The group that were in that in those two meetings, I don't believe a majority of them had memberships okay, at so, that time. So if they're members, you can bring people in, you can do your thing, whatever the case may be. You know, but if you're going to charge a rate or not charge a rate and rent a billing for $20. I think you should be able to rent the facility for $20 to do your fitness thing. And at the same time, you can't negate anybody else from the general public coming in and to use it as well. It's just like you said, a loosely gathered thing. There's no liability to the city in that regard. If all the instructors were members of the fitness center, it wouldn't make any difference one way or the other. So you're still bringing people in that are non-members. So in order to do that, I think there has to be a mechanism in place to allow non-members to come in and use that uh, facility because that's the way it's set up, right? If you're not a member, you can't use that facility, correct? correct. So uh, if the instructors aren't members, of the, then they have to, I think the rental uh, uh, option is the way to go. You rent the thing uh, for that particular purpose. You, uh, you know, you, whatever classes you hold is loosely thing and they're liable for the issues they provide the information it just makes it a lot more simply uh, with me for the skating coaches you know uh, it's different because it's a regular program that's done on a regular basis they have a lot of people to come in and the revenue stream that's developed by the MEC is or by the Ontario Motors Event Center is, is there but this I think is a little different animal so thank you for that I'd like to hear uh, for if you'd like to come up and, and speak and then uh, we'll move on uh, to any questions or come. Uh, yeah, Councilor Barry Bohan. Yeah, can we have one question answered by the attorney? I'm seeing an issue here, a big one. You have a member of, of the fitness center and they bring in uh, half a dozen people that aren't members. There then becomes a liability on the part of the uh, city. So they all have to be members if they come into that facility. Is that the way? That's I'm what we discussed at that meeting, that if they do not rent the room for them to hold a, a, a guided something in the waiting room, they have to all be fitness members. So they if can't bring rent in. it, 
then it's theirs to use and they can bring in non-member people into that one room for those two hours. And that's if it. it's a, cl a certified class Correct. with an instructor. Okay, Correct. that's the clarification. With their liability, yes. Yeah, because yes. otherwise we have the liability. Correct. Okay, thank you. Right, I think that's where we're, we're tracking at this point in time. Please, now, thank you for waiting. Come on forward and, and uh, please, uh, the light is on. Please state your name for the record and welcome to the Committee of the Whole Meeting. I'm Debbie Pakinen, and I'm a, not a fitness instructor. I'm just a member of the group. Okay, thank you. Ma'am? I'm Marsha Looney, and I'm also a member of the group that uh, meets at the ITMEX. So. Okay, so you, right now you meet loosely as a group and do things on your own together? Okay. And we don't have memberships at this time. Okay, so you're doing the walking thing right now? Yes. Which I've seen, and it's looking good. <laughs> okay. Uh, any questions, comments you might have? Our only question and comment um, was that when you look at the city's model of how they would plan to rent out the room to instructors, so when I was at the Y, I would pay one monthly fee to use the Y. I would be able to go to you know, one class, two class, however many classes I wanted for that same fee. The model that, they're, that you are all proposing here, I don't think you realize the burden it, it puts on... Um, people. Um, so if we wanted to attend like three different classes, we would be looking at three different fees, which could, you know, mount up. So that was our concern. And that's why we've had these meetings. So I think at the last meeting, we wanted the city to explore um, some kind of a professional service agreement, whether it be similar to the, the skating coaches. Um, it also takes the burden off the instructor for having to figure out what they're going to charge per class you know, how many members, they're, they're trying to cover their costs. Um, so I think that was just our request at the last meeting we talked about, the city exploring further the professional service type of, of agreement versus the renting of the room for the instructor. So neither one of you are members of, of the fitness center, is that correct? Not at this point, no. But if, And if you weren't, you would want to come in and... Uh, participate in a fitness program uh, by an instructor uh, so you don't have to be a member you just come in and, and you work on these is that is that kind of what you're looking at well there's two different models like you explained mm -hmm. the model of becoming a member and then just loosely working out as a group um, which was that's acceptable but um the other issue has to do with other instructors also besides the group that meets in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I, I don't know. We just talked about like a professional service type of agreement to not to be employees, not to be independent contractors, but to, so that the burden of holding these classes falls off of the instructor. So the instructor doesn't have to do the book work, doesn't have to figure out, you know, how they can cover their costs for each separate instructor. The model I'm used to is, is the Y, which was paying a monthly fee. Well, sure, if, you're, if everybody's paying a monthly fee, it's not an issue. But if you're not paying a monthly fee, and you're not well, part of the Y, you go to those classes, you, you're already paying a monthly fee for those classes, right? Correct. But, but he, here, in this particular case, our fitness instructors don't, are, may not be members of the fitness facility. You uh, two are not members of the fitness center. So uh, so it, it's a little bit different from the why to this. If you were members, it'd be, it, would be, it wouldn't be an issue. So uh, Councilor Johnson had a question, or maybe for you, Councilor Johnson. Oh, it's my understanding that, that a majority of the members of the Y did not get free classes. That's only, my understanding was is silver sneakers or something to that effect. There was a certain, level where those classes did not cost extra. So for me to go in and take a class, I would have had to pay a fee to take the class or my children needed swim lessons, they would have had to pay a fee. So I, I think that's something that you need to be aware of. Um, and what we're saying here is that if you are a monthly member of the of, of the MEC Fitness and your instructor is a monthly member or of the fitness, you all can get together and have your class for no fee. Um, and again, I think this comes down to 
what the city needs to do in the best interest of the city as opposed to what the fitness instructors want, what the work they want to put into their class to hold a class. Um, and, I, and I think that's something really important to keep in mind here, that um, no matter what happens, if the city has an agreement with a professional to do any kind of service, there's still insurance. They still have to demonstrate that they have liability insurance as part of what they're providing because they're, they're still in business and they're still providing a service. So um, I, I think that's really important to keep in mind that, that we, we, we are not a fitness organization. The YMCA was a fitness organization. They had all this stuff in place for years and years and years. And we are trying to do our best to provide a service to the general population. So um, my, my encouragement to you would be to join, it's, Brian, $25 a month, correct? Um, and you know, all your friends get together and you, you just start planning. Someone have to take the lead and then there is no, then that liability falls on all of you. And if they don't want insurance to lead a class, they don't, I would hope they'd get it. Anybody who's providing a service should have some sort of insurance no matter what because we live in a litigious uh, uh, society. We keep people like Mr. Lindsay gainfully employed as much as possible, overworked even. Um, and and, and as, as, as customers, you should have, make sure that your instructor has that because if you get hurt because of something they do, what are you going to do? How are you going to make sure that your medical bills are paid moving forward? And, and that's, I think, what we're looking at is how do we best support everybody? Um, or I shouldn't say we, I apologize. That's what I'm looking at is moving forward is how to do that. Um, I think... I think you will get a better bang for your buck if you are able to organize the classes that you need specifically for yourselves as members, as opposed to relying on the city to provide something and, and paying somebody who may not fit what you're looking for. Um, I think that that's one of those things that, um, if, if I had a group of friends and we wanted to Zumba, I don't know if Zumba's in anymore or not, <laughs> that's what we would do, is we'd get together and, and do some Zumba. I think it's a better use of the space, and I think it's a better service to those of you who, who want that service. So um, I, I just wanted to also make po point out that there, no matter what happens, anybody who interacts with the city in a formal manner is going to have to have insurance and provide that proof. I guess my only question is, how are you looking at this differently than from the skating program, or the way that's set up? The skating uh, instructors are, have the independent contractor agreement, like we mentioned. We talked about that agreement that requires them to have the million dollar liability insurance. And then the, it's been it's always been a park and rec program. Figure skating has been a program under the recreation department for as long as anybody can remember um, since Ida. Ida um, I remember her last name, but so I mean, do you collect the? We the collect fee all the fees, fees, and then we pay them a stipend. And so they are actually our independent contractors. The figure skating coaches are, but not employees. Not correct? employees, no. And, and they require they are required to have insurance and li liability insurance. And but you're looking at this program differently than it didn't or? sound like the instructors wanted to be independent contractors they didn't want to enter into that agreement with the insurance it was the particular problem they did say want to take that uh, model they could is that that's what we're talking about today we could offer that if that's i guess i'm not i don't know how much you know that uh entails but I know we've been very fortunate to have somebody that's been leading our classes uh, without reimbursement, and I think for her to uh, come up with something and have it fair for the people, some of the people that do take the programs do are on a fixed income, and so it's it's difficult. Okay, so. Uh the example that, that I look at, and I, I, I think that the simplest thing from my perspective is to uh, 
to uh, if you want to use the fitness center, you, you pay the $25 a month. If there's instructors, they pay the $25 a month. You can instruct, you can pick an instructor, they can hold classes, groups, classes coming in anytime they want. It's uh, at no cost to you other than the $25 a month. So say a, a fitness class is being offered three times a week and you go three times a week and you pay you know, $5 to the, for the class or $10 for the class three times a week. I mean, and then you get those classes, period. Well, if you're members of a $25 a month, you get use of the entire facility, everything, you know, from the time it opens till the time it closes. So I think, I, I think it's the best bang for your buck. But for me, for me uh, with all due respect, I, I think that it, I don't think an independent contractor works in this regard because they're so... Uh, it's not a park and rec program, number one. And number two, that uh, if you want to be uh, uh, do these kind of things and you are members of this organization and you, you know, we have a liability with respect to running the fitness center. So if you as a, as a group or as, as a, a, an instructor, uh, as a member, you can hold your classes. You don't have to hold, you don't have to have those, uh, those liability insurance because you're not charging anybody for it. But if you have instructors that are going to charge money, as Councilor Johnson alluded to and others, there has to be a liability uh, uh, mechanism in place as well. But as members, you don't need that. So, is there is there insurance on those rooms already? Is that what you're saying? Correct. When you sign up for the membership, you release the liability from the city. So you are taking your own responsibility resp okay. or your own liability. Yep. Correct. Yep. Okay. Is there a liability, say, if you're just on the walking track? And something. Nope, that's posted. Use at your own risk. If you read that really big poster with the small print, it does say use at your own risk. We're not responsible for. Uh, question, ma'am, or comment? My name is Eleanor Christensen, and I was just wondering is there any way that the. I mean, we as seniors had silver sneakers, and through our insurance, the, it was covered for the, um, the Y. Is there any way that the city could incorporate with the insurance companies for silver sneakers because it's becoming a little bit expensive to be able to go to the facility and to have an instructor. Yeah, and you know, that's a very good question. We did uh, talk about that briefly uh, with our Park and Rec Director, Ryan Silber. Uh, we don't have that in place right now, but what I'd like, Eleanor, if you would just uh, take a moment uh, and have uh, Brian Silber, our Park and Rec Director, come up and I'll give you an answer to that question that you just asked. I would appreciate uh, that. Thank uh, you. Brian? We have placed in, um, for the Silver Sneaker, what you do is you go into their online portal and um, put your facilities information in, um, and then you get a generic email back saying, thank you for submitting your interest in being a certified Silver Sneaker site. We have done that. Um, that email also um, feels like I'm back in high school asking a girl out for a date because it says, don't call us, we'll call you when we're ready. Um, we didn't follow that um, guidelines. We have additionally called them and um, to follow up of, hey, we put in this, we'd like to be a silver sneaker site, and we still have not gotten anywhere. We've even gone the route of, we know a silver sneaker site in the area has closed, so we know there's a deficiency of silver sneaker sites in our area. Here we are, look at us. Um, we want to do this, but we have not gotten anywhere with that. Hey, thank you. Uh, I have a question before we go back to Councilor Paulson and Councilor Johnson, just, just to follow up. Uh, you. So uh, Eleanor, do you spend, how much money did, uh, I shouldn't ask you that because it's a financial question. So Silver Sneakers covers a portion of, of, of that, or do they, they cover the whole thing? They cover, uh, from what I understand, they cover what people, they, as you go in, you're, you're covered. I don't know how that works. Do you know how that works? I do. Okay. okay. Uh, Brian? Thank you. How Silver Sneakers work is... Um, if somebody has the silver sneaker benefit on their insurance, they would sign up with us as a silver sneaker member. Every time they come to the facility and scan their badge, we would receive $2 up to $20 per month. 
At the end of the month, we would have to generate a report of every Silver Sneaker member with the date and time that they came to the facility, submit that to Silver Sneakers, and then they cut us a reimbursement check for that. So if I have Silver Sneakers and I come one time, the city would receive $2 for my membership for the month. Whereas you come every single day, we would be capped at $20 a month. E even if she came 25 times, we would still be capped at that $20 per month. And that's per, that's per silver per sneaker Per individual, member. yes. Okay, thank you. So, I mean, okay, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna reserve this idea to later on, maybe somebody else will bring it up about how we can maybe bridge that gap somehow. But let's go left to right first, and then we'll move on. Uh, Councillor Paulson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so I had my light on quite a while. I, I wanted to kind of go through, if I could backtrack. Yeah, if you I don't apologize. Mind. No, no, yeah, I just, ahead. I don't want to rehash. But um, I attended the first meeting, and I was unable to attend the second meeting. At the second meeting, it the at, let me back up. At the first meeting, it sounded like there was um, definitely issues with the instructor's understanding how to collect the fee. And there was also discussion on users that were like, say on a fixed income, how am I going to pay for if, if I'm used to paying one of the, I think um, people that were, was grandfathered in at a $40 a month Y membership because they'd been there that long. Um, and so the justification is, is if I'm going to take three classes a week, how much are those classes going to be? And then it's going to price me out of, the game of attending X, Y, Z, or how many classes per week. Um, so that was one discussion. Now the the Y fee, I think, was um, the, the latest was $55 a month. And the city's charging $25 a month. So we had talked about there's a $30 a month, basically, cushion that could be utilized for taking classes. And this doesn't include silver sneakers at all. This is just... Um, straight memberships. So part of that, um, I, I'm try just trying to recapture that meeting, and, and I hope I'm doing an okay job. Um, but the the other portion of that was that the instructors were trying to figure out how um, they could charge, and if someone's going to take one class, and then they're going to take Lisa's class, and they're going to do that, like how, how is that going to work? Um, and the certificate of liability insurance, and then the room rental. So those all were things that were discussed, and then it was going to come forward at the second meeting to kind of maybe brainstorm a little further. And it sounds like when you came to the second meeting, and I want to clarify this, because it sounds like as long as everyone has memberships and then they can reserve the space um, or basically just group together loosely and, and be at the space at the same time, they can do the class at no charge but there's an instructor that's not getting paid. Is that correct? And and part of that reasoning or rationale for an instructor to to do part of this is to make some revenue. Is that not correct? So were there any as many instructors there having this discussion as to how they're going to generate their own revenue from this type of a situation? Um, because I feel like, I mean, I, I love the fact that it sounds like it all solved it itself. But in reality, it's not like what Councillor Friedley was saying in terms of cohesiveness or consistency of classes. Um, what's the what's going to be the incentive for just group group activity with no instructor getting paid? And that's one question I have. I don't know if someone can answer that. That was just that, that actually was discussed too, and that's where they came up with the professional services agreement again. And I had and that requires the I had discussed the professional oh. services agreement at the first meeting, and and I know most people are opposed to this, but I'd like to share my thoughts. Um, so, say you've got that thirty dollar cushion, and we could capture. Say if you want to do a membership with no classes, it's twenty five dollars a month. If you want to do a membership with classes, say it's $55 a month, you take that $30 and you put it in a fund that would fund your professional services agreement. But whatever the dollar amount would be in there couldn't exceed, you couldn't, so if only 10 people took your classes, you're only making 
uh, $300 during that month. Now, that's not going to make that instructor much money. You know, almost like a pass-through is what I had discussed originally. But what I'm trying to understand is what's the incentive for an instructor to come? And then there is a drawback if you're paying for individual classes on a fixed income, although the fee that we have is only $25 a month. It's a very reasonable fee. And I can't, maybe maybe people wouldn't exceed more than three classes a month. Um, I don't know if classes are charged $10 a class. I don't know what that, I, I guess that hadn't been fleshed out. Um, and I'm not trying to put a monkey wrench in anything. I'm trying to make it where it it is sustainable and also where it would have consistency of classes and, and consistency. You'd have more members if you had more consistency um, and more instructors would then be wanting to come forward to teach Zumba. I mean, I don't know. I, I like to go to classes, but if I was with a group of people that are like me, we wouldn't get very far because I don't know how to instruct a class. So um, I'm trying to, th I'm trying to understand how we do this. It's not a park and rec program. I get that. Is there a way to say, okay, here's your tiered levels because people that are used to being, you know, we have a gap with the Y not being here anymore. There, there is a definite deficit um, with the Y not being here. So if people are used to paying the last rate at the Y was at $55 threshold and being able to utilize classes, could we have a tiered system and we say $25 was just a straight membership to use the, the rooms. And if you want classes, it's $55 or whatever have you um, per month. We take that overage and we use that overage towards a professional services arrangement. And I'm not saying that that's the best way to go, but from what I was hearing at the first meeting, and it sounds like at the second meeting, everything sorted itself out, but it still leaves the instructors with no incentive to instruct. So that, that kind of confuses me, you know, like if a whole bunch of, I don't know, like if you're used to working out and you're going to say, I'm going to, I'm going to do a weightlifting class and you, you're happy to lead the class. But if a bunch of people that don't really know how to do weightlifting are going to have a class together, they're not going to, no one's going to be able to lead that class. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just, I'm just trying to understand what you're asking is what is your model? We're saying it's not a park and rec model. But there needs to be some element of incentive for, I mean, I think you get a lot more memberships if you had more incentivized and then figured out a way in which to um, reimburse instructors. I think you'd have more membership. You'd have an increase in membership from even the 25 to the 55. And then, you know, that, that, overage then could be put in a pot. Does that make sense? Kind of what I'm, and I know I was getting at that at the last meeting, and I know you're shaking your head. <laughs> I'm going to tell you why in a minute. Okay, but I mean, the, the, it's about the liability insurance. You can still get liability insurance, but the way it states now, no instructors are ever going to get paid if they host a, a volunteer class, and if they do want to charge They've got to have the liability insurance. So why wouldn't we try to capture the revenue of the $55 or whatever? I'm just trying to think of it as a put on my business hat as well as trying to accommodate those on a fixed income and those that want to instruct for and make some money. So if, if you guys could maybe help me walk through that, I'm just. Thank you. Uh, thank you. So a lot to, to discuss there. Well, once we get done with this discussion, we're going to take a little short break. But Eleanor, uh, do you have a comment before we go to Councilor Johnson? I, I have to agree very much with what she spoke about. But the thing about it is we never paid to be a member of the Y. It was all inclusive. So we never paid that 55 or whatever the amount is. It was once you were on senior sne slipper <laughs> sneaker. Then they were, it accommodated everything. And when we had the whole facility, the, the pool and everything. At one time, they charged for using special classes for the pool. But then when I, I hadn't been for a while, and then they, they started, the pool was inclusive with senior Snickers. 
slippers. So everything was inclusive. So we didn't pay that extra $30. And, and I might just add on the silver sneakers program, what that is, is it's a subsidization. So it's, it's a, it's a lower, we're getting, it's subsidized. So it's like when, when your insurance company bills your insurance or when your the health facility bills the insurance company and you're on Medicare, there's only a certain percentage of reimbursement. So silver sneakers is more of a, a subsidized program, which is fine because it adds up to almost $25 a month, but that's how that program works. Initiated. In it, yeah. One of the things I want to point out is the importance of the senior sneakers, of people being staying healthy, and that was the whole principle of the whole idea of, of having the so and people keep, and then you need somebody as an instructor to give you the right form because invar invariably you can hurt yourself. You, can, you know, if you're not doing it the right way. So they are very, very important with this facility. So with that said, I, I, I hope that we can come up to some kind of a, where the, the city of Virginia will take in the fact that they are helping seniors stay healthy. Yeah, I think we all agree with that, just to find a way in which we can accommodate that. Absolutely. Uh, go to Councilor Johnson, he's been waiting a long time, and then back over to Councilor Barabo. Councilor Johnson. Thank you. So um, it was also brought up about community ed instructors, and I would encourage you all to think about that. Um, community ed can solve a lot of those problems, but there's still going to be a fee. And I think that's the, 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 the main part of what I'm hearing right now is that you all don't want to pay a fee because everything was free before, but it was being paid by somebody. There was, there was some kind of, something was happening, and with the city, we don't have the resources to provide free services. Almost all of our programs in Park and Rec cost some money. There may be some scholarships available or that kind of stuff, but, but in order to not raise the levy more than 4%, in order to, to maintain, there has to be income to match what we're putting out. Um, uh, I would encourage you and your friends to start writing letters to your insurance company. Start calling them every day. If, if we've done that, that's what you all need to do too. It's your insurance company, however they're affiliated with Silver Sneakers, that's holding up this end. Um, I, I, I've been in Brian's office, we've had this discussion. You all need to do something um, yourselves. Write letters to your insurance, call them, email them, tell them you want this program here in Virginia, have your friends do it. That's how it's going to move along quickly. We can, we're, we're, just one, we're just one little city in the middle of their multi-billion dollar corporation, but they'll listen to you. You're the ones paying the premiums. You're the people that are doing it. So I would really ask that you do that. Um, I know if you came, I would have no problem supporting a letter. If you all needed a letter, I would even bring it up from the city saying we want this officially, uh, if, if your group came and asked for that, I can't see any reason why the council wouldn't support a letter of support like that. Um, we are, um, uh, the other thing, and I don't know, I'm going to ask this very carefully, but is there any reason that you all don't tip your instructors after your classes? And I'll, 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 I'll just leave it at that. Thank you. Would you, would you please, uh, unfortunately, would you please come forward uh, to the microphone? I apologize for you have to do that, but we, we are recording this for the general public and the, the public would like to hear everybody's comments, so thank you. I guess uh, Mary Beth has been doing this out of just her desire to provide exercise for us. And uh, when the Y closed, I guess there was sort of a void, and so we've been trying to work on, you know, Something, but I guess as far as I am concerned, I would pay like a Y fee. If if there were classes available, I would pay the Y fee, and or whatever fee that you would have, and then I would be able to take classes from the different instructors. So, I mean, I'm not looking for any free, you know, room or anything like that. But I guess our main concern is that. It would be something that would be simplified, that the instructors would be getting a fair uh, compensation. So, but um, no, I wouldn't just say I would 
I wouldn't pay any more than $25 a month. I would, if I was going to be taking classes from several people, I'd be paying more. So, but yeah, when the Y closed, there was a very big um, void. A lot of people are still trying to find places here and there. I guess you're, the center that we have is um, centrally located and has, you know, facilities. So I guess more that's what I was looking for. So thank you. Thank you. Councillor Baraboo? Yeah, I'm going to be a big naysayer in this whole uh, discussion, okay? Number one, when we have these instructions, these classes, there's uh, room capacity for so, only so many people. I think it's 20 or 25, somewhere in there. Um, is, that, is that correct, Jim? 27, sir. 27, okay. So in, for an instructor to make any uh, money on this, if he's going to be on his own, he has to charge a fee. He has to be able to cover his costs, and that's not a lot of people to cover your uh, costs in here. One of the reasons, and I'm going to say it straight out, the Y closed, they didn't have enough fees that they were charging. They didn't have enough income coming in uh, to, to cover their costs that they were giving all these classes free and stuff. That's a no-brainer. Uh, I ran a million dollars worth of businesses, and you have to cover your costs. And the Y did not cover their costs when you look at their financials. And if Eleanor is correct that they got everything free because they're seniors, etc., I don't have anything against seniors. I'm a big senior. I'm 76 years old. So I understand that, but we would have to, if we do the model that uh, uh, Councillor Paulson is talking about, we'd have to hire an extra employee just to serve us back, taking care of the dollars that would be reimbursed, and et cetera. You know how expensive it is to put an employee in if they're going seven days a week with instructors and classes, we're talking a full-time employee to do the reimbursements and et cetera. Uh, that's a huge amount of money and liability plus benefits for us as a, as a city. So the independent, uh, not the independent, but the um, instructors charge their own fees, take care. If you're going to be in business, you got to take care of your own expenses. you got to take care of whatever you need to do. Your costs out, your income in. And if you end up with a profit, that's uh, so be it. That's part of doing business. Membership would help if the people all had memberships. They could provide their own classes, as, as we talked about, have some, but they all have to have memberships to have their own individual class and, and set up time with, with either Jim or, or with Brian uh, to utilize a class throughout the day for two hours. They could go in there for free and have a class if they have somebody that knows how to instruct and train people, especially if they're doing any weightlifting or anything like that, because that does require instruction. That's where I'm coming from. I'm not for a reimbursement program if we were to reimburse an instructor off of fees if we charge more and then put part of it in a pot. That's extra employee that has to do work for us as a city. And we're having enough time with uh, all the uh, contracts that we have out there for unions and stuff with the raises we're, we're going to have to give out here because of the competition in, in the fields of... Uh, union and, and the price of uh, our increases. And I want to hold our levy increase to 4%. We can't afford it anymore. Now the argument comes, well, everybody's paying for that at MEC, even outside individuals that don't live in Virginia. That's not true. The building facility itself is being paid for the, by the whole regional area. The prices and the employees are paid by the city of Virginia taxpayer dollars. It has to be separate generated money. We cannot use any of that uh, uh, tax money and bond money that we received as a 1% sales tax. We cannot use that for salaries of any employees in that building, period. So all the expenses for employees fall in the city of Virginia's taxpayers' back. Nobody from outside. And we want it to be used by outside people, but they have to pay something to use that facility. And I, I just think of a uh, fair price, uh, you, you know, 25 bucks is, uh, when we approve that, that is very, very reasonable. I don't know what the instructors would charge. That's something that we'd have to research on to find out what they would charge per class. It may not be that much, depending on the instructor. That's all I have to say, and I, I know not very many people like what I'm saying, but that's okay. I'm done with my... 
council duties as of the first of the year. So I'm gonna, gonna get my last season, whether people like it or not. All right, uh, thank you. And so I know we've discussed this at, at length and I don't think from my perspective, we're gonna come up to a resolution right now. We are discussing this and there's been a lot, a lot of options on the table, a lot of things, a lot of ideas that we need to fetter out. So uh, I think this bodes for uh, more conversation on this, pro uh, this uh, subject. So I would like just to limit uh, one more comment and then I'd like to uh, you know, move on. So uh, Councillor Paulson. Thank you, Mayor. I just want to respond to Councillor Birbu. Um, okay. I wasn't, um, I guess I wasn't insinuating that it would be an employee base. I was trying to put together how we could conduct a professional services agreement with the overage. Um, the capacity of that room is 27 people. So say you had 20 people taking classes per month or, or per, you know, 20 people a class. Okay. That's if you charge, if you use that $55 model, that's $600 a month extra that you'd be putting into a pot. So my question is, and as we continue this discussion, could we look at a model, and Brian, maybe you could help research this, where if they had a tiered system, because it's we're not we're not paying anything out of the cities. Just like we do on the next agenda item, it's a stipend. It, it's, a, it's a professional services agreement. Um, Somebody still has to do it, though, in the city. We yeah, do it with our skating people, let, 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 city employees. Yeah, let her continue. What the heck are you talking about? Uh, Sorry, Larry. Let, let her, let her, let, yeah. We haven't been in business long enough to understand. Councilor Mirabel, hang on just a moment. Let Councilor uh, Paulson finish. Councilor Paulson. Sorry, I'm sorry. No, no, it's okay. I mean, this... We're just trying to get to the heart of the matter here, but I'm, I'm wondering if within our rec desk, we have, Brian, within rec desk, we have capabilities. Uh, there's an there's a app that the skating coaches use, I'm pretty sure, to log in hours or what have you. Um, in just a quick brainstorm right now, we have um, set up in rec desk, a fitness membership. We could create another membership type of a class membership um, that could be an add on. Um, but like Councillor Baraboo saying is then comes the staff time in going, okay, how many active members do we have in there that is generating X amount um, that translates to this many potential classes that we have. Now let's find the instructors for them. So it, it will there create a a, additional I, I staffing considerations um, that the council would need to consider of adding more workload to a or multiple staff members. And I would like to, I mean, I would like to explore that first of all, because mm -hmm. I really feel that there's some kind of an app out there, probably a freebie that could in fact keep track of that. Like you, you lock, you know, as you swipe in or whatever, you're there, it tracks that. So, I mean, I'd like to see that explored. I mean, I don't know, I don't mean to push this. I'm trying to solve a problem. Um, and, and it sounds like the problem was already solved when everyone came together. And I don't mean to throw a monkey wrench into it, but there's no incentive for instructors to teach classes and consistency of classes. So if we're just collecting the overage, I don't know why we couldn't use that no matter. I mean, maybe it doesn't even need to be tracked. I, it, it's just here's the money that's come in and disperse it through the amount of instructors. Maybe it's just a math thing, I'm not sure. But Brian or, or Britt, do you understand what I'm trying to get at here? And would that be something that we could feasibly explore without having, it, it's not, I mean, I guess we'd have to say how much staff time would it take, you know, if we could find a program that already exists and it's not really a staff time issue, I would be open, very much open to doing something like this. If it's cost prohibitive, then obviously not, but I, I think we should explore it. Uh, 
Are you looking for an answer? Or? I kind of am. <laughs> well, um, not to continue to throw a monkey wrench onto this, but right. then what type of classes are we offering? Are we offering stretching classes? Are we offering Zumba classes? Are we offering step aerobics? I are think we that in- depends, Brian, that would depend on what instructors come forward. Let them determine, well, the- let the public determine what type of classes they want. If we're running the classes, though, we need to be, in my mind, we need to be looking for this is the class that we want. Now we have to go find an instructor to teach this class. I would look at it completely opposite of that. Okay. So you would look at it the way that if an instructor comes to us, that's the class that we offer. Well, I suppose you'd have to have enough people. I mean, those instructors would have to come together, and it sounds like a couple of them already have come together, and I had asked them to run some financial numbers of what they would need to charge versus what, how many numbers in attendance would need to justify renting the room and having the liability insurance. So I think there's, there's things to explore here, but I don't want to close the door on, on opening up a different avenue to the utilization of this building and, and, and alienate people that are on a fixed income potentially because they have to pay per class and it would be more expensive for them to do that plus have a membership. So I'm trying to, I, I don't know how else I can explain it or say it, I'm trying to come up with a solution where everybody, it's a win-win for everybody without taking a lot of our staff time. We can't do that, obviously, I know that. But there's got to be programs out there or an app that, that tracks these things. I mean, if you look at even at that $600 a month, I'm looking at what we're paying these coach skating coaches. I mean, that's that's really not much overage as it is. So I, I feel like we can generate the revenue and it would be a pass through. It would just have to be logistically. How does that work? And I'm, I mean, I'm not trying to put more burden on anyone's plate. I'm just trying to solve a problem. And I don't know if anyone else agrees with me, but I'd like to see us explore that. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, this may apparently need a lot more discussion, whether they're going to have it here at this meeting or not. But uh, we'll have a comment here from Sherry first, then over to Councilor Biondich. And then if we're going to continue to move this, I'd like to I'd like to recess this particular issue and get item 11 and 12 out of here so our poor people can get back to work and we can get back to this topic if we deem uh, uh, new members to do so. So first, um, Sherry, any comments with respect to this? Um, when considering what uh, Councilor Paulson is asking about, you're going to have to also take in consideration we are paying $2,400 a month for the fitness equipment alone. That's a lease. Plus, once those wear out, we have to replace that. So you have to figure in at least just the equipment alone is $2,400 a month. I don't know what... More memberships that more memberships you have offset. How many do we have now as memberships? Right. 192 is our current number um, between the monthly payment for the fitness equipment and the staff cost um, for the staff that sits at the desk. Uh, we figured out that we want to average, I believe it was 220 or 250 members per month. <clears throat> and our goal is to hit that number by January. So we are well on track to hitting that goal of paying the fitness center staffing and um, equipment lease with memberships. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilor Biondich, and then we'll take a quick, oh, we'll do 11 and 12 and then take a break. Thank you. Um, 12 and 13. I know the notice went out for all of us um, for the meeting. And I think it's important that we have a meeting with the council and the instructors because we're disjointed right now. We're very disjointed. We don't know what, what the instructors, I mean, we need a conversation with them and at our meetings that we have had, we the first meeting we had two instructors. The second meeting we had one. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh. Also does, Connie. okay. Also has, you know, has. So 
So when we talk about a lot more information, we have to know how many people are we serving? Um, I had asked how big were the class sizes. So we're putting a lot of energy into something that we don't know without talking to the instructors and everybody who really wants to do this, who would be committed to doing this. So I, right now, I feel very disjointed. When I left that meeting the other night, I felt pretty good that, you know, we've come to some kind of a compromise on how this can work with not a lot of um, staff time or work that's going to go into it. Because I also understand we are not the why, and we can't operate like the why did. Um, we don't have, we have to pay for this building. Um, so I, I really think that the full council and the instructors, we need to sit down and talk about this if it's going to come to anything. Um, because we're, we have three members here, but we have no instructors here. So, and we've had the nighttime meetings, like I said, where we had two instructors and then one and a new one. So we need to know what we're dealing with before we explore or get into anything deeper. So that's my only comment. Thank you. Okay. So uh, I don't think we're going to resolve this today. I think we need to explore this even further. If it means meeting with the fitness instructors, that's fine. But for, from my perspective, uh, another quickly, Basaba Fit is still working on opening that as a private uh, entity that may open up and that may resume the, the, the issues with respect to programming in that regard. So that is a, a factor to consider as well. So what I'd like to do is maybe uh, uh, have a motion made to have um, well, we can we can meet or have Brian meet with the fitness instructors, and then we can go from there. I mean, uh, uh, if that's part of your issue, calls or beyond this, because we're not going to resolve this today. There are so many different options out there, and I don't think we're prepared to make a decision either way because you know there's a lot of factors involved: staffing, financing, availability, you know, uh, membership. All those kind of things have to be resolved, Councilor Beyondich. Thank you, and I would be okay with. Brian meeting with them, but I think as a council, because of all the concerns and questions we have, we need to sit down and talk with them as well. Very good, thank you. Okay, anything else on this uh, item before we move to the next item on the agenda? We'd like to move uh, items number uh, 12 and 13 real quick, and we have to take a break. So item number 12, uh, if we may, uh, we'll bring uh, uh, re review and approve the quote for the FX300 from NEO for the wastewater treatment plant. We have uh, Mr. Mo has been uh, uh, patiently waiting. Mr. Mo, can you give us a brief analysis of this and we'll try to move this one way or the other. Yeah, good morning. Um, this is as expected. Uh, we have to be online by January 13th. So this would be our first load of the new chemical. Which is unfunded mandate. Councilor Johnson. Versus the $6,500, was that anticipated it being that much? Yeah, that's a new fee. Uh, that Before, when we did the trials, they didn't have that fee. Uh, the price hasn't changed all that much as far as the chemical, but the, the fee for the shipping is a new fee. I would, as we're moving forward, let's make sure we're putting... I would say 10 grand for the shipping in the budget. I mean, this is getting a little obscene, but um, I will move the, the the purchase and delivery fees. Moved by Councillor uh, Johnson to approve the quote for X, FX300 for NEO for the wastewater treatment plant. Is there support? Support for discussion, quick. Support for discussion, further discussion. Councillor Freelieb and then Councillor Barable. Where is it shipped from, Paul? Like, how far? I I don't have that. I can get that for you. Because that really seems excessive for a shipment. Even still. And this is something that comes by rail, or is it like a tanker truck? It's a tanker truck. Well, it seems crazy costly, but... Yeah. All right, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Barable? No, it's not a crazy cost. When you figure uh, diesel fuel at the cost, it is over $5 a gallon, and, and those trucks don't get more than, what, eight, eight miles to the gallon at max, maybe four, five. Somewhere near, so you start figuring over 2,000 miles, it's, uh, it's a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of loot. 
refresh our memory, the chemical is for which one of those mandates again from, from the MPCA? This is for the phosphorus That's what uh, I thought. 0.07 okay. limit of milligrams per liter. Okay. Okay, has been moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? Hearing seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. One more item before we take a break. Item number 13 under finance, review and approve the quote for concrete crushing at the north side dump. We have uh, our, par our public works director, Jim Rosett, who also has been patiently waiting. Uh, could you give us a little synopsis before we move forward with this? Morning. Um, say we're looking at crushing our waste concrete up. It's uh, stockpiled now at our north side dump. Uh, we do have an MPC um, landfill application for storing concrete. But uh, my understanding in the past, we've, we've shared this cost with public utilities, so it's 50% split on it. Uh, it's nothing new, but we are looking. Uh, the landfill is pretty full up there right now, the site is. So we're hoping to get it crushed. I'd, I'd like to have a contractor in there by March to crush. So hopefully we have it done by the time snow restrictions go off and it will allow us for the contractors for next year to start bringing concrete back in. And then we also put some um, clay, which is a binder. We set aside from this last summer's construction projects. We'll add that into our product that we're crushing and it will make a, a viable class five material, which we'll use on our roads and that. Oh, fantastic. Thank you, Jim. Uh, Councilor Johnson. Um, on the, the bid from um, Lewis and Sons, um, it says crushing concrete provided hauled with, with the provided gravel. Do we provide the gravel or do we, is it cotton? We provide all the material. They they, per, they provide the crushing unit and the manpower to do the work. So so it would be the five sixty five a ton, not the seven forty five per ton. It will be five sixty five. Is what was five sixty five? Yes, okay. and we'll we will add we'll add a percentage of binder in there, which is the clay that we've stockpiled from our last year's three projects, which is saving us the money for that. I appreciate. You, re reuse, reduce, recycle. I think this is a great um, step forward. And I like that the mobilization is significantly less and it's still a relatively local business. So I appreciate that. And I will move the contract with Lewis. And I'm not going to try the last name in Sons. Lustig. Lustig. Yeah, uh, Lustig and Sons. Uh, yes. Thank you. Uh, motion by Councilor Johnson to approve. Uh, a quote from Lustig and Sons. Is there support? I'll support. Support by Councilor Freelieb. Is there any further discussion? Uh, Councilor Freelieb first, then over to Councilor Baraboo, and then any other uh, comments before we take a break? Councilor Freelieb. Have we used this contractor previously, or was it always Uland in the past? Um, I believe it's been Uland in the past. Okay, and are you familiar with Lustick and Sons? Are they competent and capable? Yes, I've, uh, I've used them um, over the last 20 plus years. Good, thank you. Uh, they specialize more than anybody in this. Um, so that's more their bread and butter than anybody else's. Oh, thank you, Councilor Freedy, uh, Jim, uh, Councilor Barabu. Well, if, um, I don't know if any of you were here long enough ago, but uh, we uh, threw out every bid that Lustig had for the city of Virginia going way back because they did a uh, really poor uh, work on some uh, work for the city of Virginia, some street work, if I remember correctly. And I don't know what it was, 10, 15 years ago, maybe. Uh, we did this, if you go back on the records, we were not uh, accepting any bids from Lustig for work that they did for the city for many years because of the project that cost us a lot of extra money because they didn't do it properly. I'm going to bring that back up. I don't care. I'm just going to vote no against them. But uh, sure. uh, if you want to look back and our records are going way back and street, street work, we have not had a bid from Lustig for any work for probably 15 years. Thank you. Uh, Councillor uh, Bionich. I was just going to ask, was that for roads or was that for the crushing? This was for, this was for roads, but we didn't uh, give them any contracts or anything for a long period of time because of the shoddy work they did on roads. Thank you. Okay, thank you. 
All right, it has been moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? Okay, just a clarification real quick on, on what it says in the, what it says here. It says uh, Lewis Lustig and Sons, uh, 7.45 per ton, and then it says, please note that the quote from Lewis Lustig is, did include an option for crushing concrete at a site for 5.65 a ton. So uh, what are we doing? The, it was 765 or five. Was there some difference with the short ton on there or what uh, was? It says it has received two quotes for this work. There's as follows. Lustig and Sons, 745 per ton. Eulen Brothers, 950 per ton. But it says, please note that the quote from Lewis Lustig and Sons did include an option for crushing concrete with provided haul in gravel at the site for 565 a ton. But we're providing the gravel, right? We're providing the binder, yes. So it's actually 745 a ton, right? Yes. Okay, thank you. That's thank you for the clarification. So it has been moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? A hearing and seeing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. A roll call, please, Pam. Paulson? Aye. Yandage? Aye. Johnson? Yes. Yes. Deli is absent. Cuffey? Aye. Baraboo? No. Friedlieb? Aye. A uh, motion passes uh, five to one with one absent. Thank you, Jim. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for your patience. Okay, uh, if it's uh, amenable, everybody, can we take a short break, please? Let's take five minutes or so or whatever you need, and then we'll come back and resume uh, the rest of the committee home meeting. Thank you. We stand in recess. Okay, we're back in uh, 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 session after recess. Uh, so uh, we'll continue on with the agenda under building and grounds. Britt? Thank you. Um, next item on the agenda is item 4B, which is review the request from the Wolverine Blue Line Club to include an addendum to their contract regarding room rentals. Um, Brian? And Jim. Hello again. Um, at the last committee, the whole meeting had come to you seeking to add a addendum to the Blue Line Club agreement. And you had asked for some information regarding um, what our rates are for the rooms um, and versus what um, Rockridge Youth Hockey Association uh, pays. Um, did provide that to you in an email. It's also in your packet. Um, we have not had any discussions with the Blue Line Club at this point. We've been waiting for direction from council as to what you would like to see. I will let you know that we did discuss this at the last Park and Rec Commission meeting, uh, and Park and Rec Commission um, suggested that we go somewhere between the agreement that we have with Rock Ridge Youth Association and our normal rate. Okay. Uh, but essentially, I'm just seeking um, guidance from the council as to what you would like to see as we begin discussions with the Blue Line Club. Okay, based upon recommendations from uh, Park and Rec and, uh, and uh, uh, Park Rec Commission and Park and Rec uh, staff, uh, you're recommending that uh, we look at uh, approving this at, at, with, with some rate adjustment? We, we don't have anything for okay. you to approve. Okay. Um, we are looking for, I guess, negotiation strategies, what the council would be willing to approve or willing, would, what the council would like to see brought to them in an addendum. Okay, thank you, uh, Brian. Uh, Councilor Johnson. Thank you. Um, I think having the same as Rockridge is appropriate considering that when youth hockey does have tournaments, they're bringing in substantial revenue as opposed to Rockridge that's having a game in the evening. So I don't think it needs to be a, any increase. I think the, the same, um, same addendum would be fine considering what they are bringing in. And then my other question, and I think it's answered with the Raha uh, start additional and then amenities, excuse me, 25%, that would be like the kitchen or something else if they needed to. Uh, that would be tablecloths, um, things okay, so like what, that. But so if they need to use the kitchen? Yes, that 25%. Okay, I just want to make sure because if they're having a spaghetti feed, they're going to need to use the kitchen and, and um, 
so I, I'm fine with the, the pricing as presented here, $25 a day, a dollar an hour boardroom, uh, meeting room at $5 an hour, and then the additional um, discount of 25 it, so is this a 75% discount, or is it a 25% discount? 75% discount. Charged, it is charged at 25% of our current rate. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you for the clarification. Uh, thank you, uh, Brian. Thank you, Councillor Johnson. Councillor Paulson. Thank you, Mayor. I would also agree um, with, the, with the amended rates as in the chart here. Um, I did have some feedback from um, a few... <clears throat> parents, um, a part of the Blue Line Club, and um, they did ask that it would be the same as the youth hockey. So um, I, I feel like it's probably very few and far between if they're going to do a spaghetti feed here and there or whatever. So I don't feel like it's a huge loss of revenue because of the few and far between. They'd probably be utilizing it according to some of the conversations that I had. And how I look at it, even though like what we are doing with Rockridge Youth Hockey Association, obviously at those these rates, we're not making anything. What we are doing is essentially getting people used to having their events in this building so when they have their own private event, their first thought is us. So essentially this is almost a marketing tool because our hockey contingency, we, we do live in the state of hockey. Um, if you get all the hockey people thinking we're the only place to do something, that is good for our business in the long run. And I think, thank you for that, Brian. I think one of the comments that was made was this is a perfect opportunity to use that, utilize that space for additional advertising and marketing, um, say if other teams come in or what have you, so um, or family members from out of town visiting. Um, so I, I guess um, not to go against the recommendation of Park and Rec, but I, I feel like staying the same and, and having that addendum, same as youth hockey, um, I feel like that makes sense to me. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Paulson. I like the consistency as well with respect to that. It's it's across the board, and uh, everybody's you know kind of on the same playing field, and uh, and I'm supportive of this. I know that uh, the Blue Line Club and others have uh, held their spaghetti feeds and some other events at the Virginia Elks Lodge, for which I am very familiar with. And uh, we charge them fifty dollars uh, uh, to use the, the facility. So they're getting you know so this. This proposal, I think, makes sense to uh, move it to the Eintracht Moyes Event Center and give them the opportunity to be competitive in that regard and provide them the same opportunity. So I appreciate the work from the Park and Rec Commission and from the staff here, but I agree with the recommendation moving forward that we keep it that way. Uh, Councilor uh, Preedley. And do we need a motion then to uh, yes. include that addendum? I we would do. need the motion to include the addendum to the contract regarding the room rentals for the Wolverine Blue Line Club. Peel the way of the onion, is there support? I'll support, Mayor. Moved by Councillor Freely, but supported by Councillor Baraboo. Is there any further discussion? Councillor Biondich. Thank you. The one question I was asked by the public is for the spaghetti feeds and larger um, happenings in that facility, is it the city staff setting up, cleaning up, and tearing down, or is it volunteers from this particular group? The city staff sets up every room, regardless of the event. And cleanup? Tear down. Mm -hmm. That is city staff. Thank you. Hey, thank you. It has been moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? Hearing and seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is discuss the request. I'm sorry. Approve resolution authorizing entering into an independent contractor agreements for figure skating program. Brian? Um, as you will see in your packet, there is a um, resolution put together to hire our figure skating instructors for this season. Um, and just looking for council approval on that, hiring them as the independent contractors. Okay, uh, Councillor Paulson. I'll move to approve. Councillor Paulson moves to approve. Is there support? Support, for discussion. support by Councillor Johnson for discussion. Further discussion, Councilor Johnson. The individual that has none for wage and recital, what is that? 
Um, the figure skating program um, stretches basically 11 months. So while they are coaching that the um, wage is their monthly stipend that they would receive. The figure skating program itself, that is the spring recital that we always do, um, which is much more, um, involves a lot more time. So that is why there is a recital um, fee oh, also. My, my question is, is that there's, there's a, a person listed with none under both wage and recital. Rebecca Turvo, late learned to skate assistant, none and none. That I am not sure on. I do believe, um, I will verify this, that they were going to have one volunteer, and that might be the volunteer, but let me verify that before the council meeting. That's fine. And Thank so we you. did I, give them the volunteer agreement and so that they are covered under our liability insurance. So she fills out a simple application saying that I understand I am a volunteer, I understand I'm not get paid, um, but I will verify that. Appreciate that. Thank you Thank very you. much. Hey, uh, thank you. Uh, Sherry? I just noticed on the uh, independent contractor service agreement, it says October 17, 2021. I think that's supposed to be 22, correct? Thanks. Okay, uh, change that date. Uh, make that amendment. Uh, the motion and the second will make the amendment to the uh, to reflect the correct date. Okay, thank you. Uh, has been moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? Councilor Freelieb and then Councilor Baraboo. So this used to be a seasonal program, correct? It's now a essentially 11 month program. And so did we budget accordingly for the increase in costs for our staff? Yes, we have. Okay. And are we generating the revenue that's going to offset those costs? Yes, least? we do. Right. Something in addition to um, revenue that offsets their ice usage. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councilor Freelieb. Councilor Baraboo. That was um, my exact question, so I don't need to ask it. Okay, thank you. So it has been moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? A hearing and seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The next item on the agenda is to discuss the request for proposals for the 2024 IIHF Women World's Championship bid. Well, this is exciting, Brian. This is very exciting. Um, there is, just to be honest with you, a very slim chance that if we apply, for, put in a request or proposal for this, that we would actually be awarded it. Um, you see the bid package in your um, agenda package today. This championship is um, held throughout the world in 2024. It is going to be hosted in the United States. So um, they are currently um, accepting proposals through January 20th for this um, hockey tournament. It is a 12-day hockey tournament that also requires three to five days beforehand for the teams to practice and get used to the ice and everything. It is to take place between March 22nd and April 16th of 2024. So not this season, but next season. Um, wanted to have a discussion with the council as to if you would like to see us put in a bid for this, knowing with those dates, we have a event that is normally scheduled in the event center during those dates that we would have to bump, that being the home and boat show. We would not be able to meet their needs. In 2024, um, we have the possibility of hosting uh, a youth hockey state championship, which would take place um, the weekend before this occurs, and then we would end up moving right into the um, IIHF events. So we would have two sheets of ice running in the building through mid-April. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, quick comment I guess I'll make is that one, I think we should do it. And number two, you know, I I, under, I, real, I I agree that there's a very slim chance that we have an offer this, primarily not because of the facility and what we can provide, 
it's it's the amenities we can, we're going to be difficult. The hotel space, oh, that's going to be huge. Hospitality space is going to be huge. If we don't have that hotel up and running, you know, we don't have a chance. And so I agree with you, but I think we should, I think we should make the bid. And then if, uh, if everything is aligned in the universe and we, we, it, we're accepted, then we make those adjustments as needed. Uh, other comments from the council, please. Uh, first, Councilor Freelieb, then Councilor Baraboo. Yeah, I would suggest if you can find the time to complete the application, then certainly that gets our name out there, at least nationally, if not internationally, with regard to the type of uh, facility that we have available. And knowing Plymouth's facility, it's, I don't think it's a whole lot more than what we have to offer. I've been there, and I don't think it is. Obviously, they have a lot more hotels in and around the area. But I thought I saw in that process that the hotels have to be within an hour of the site. So that's we still could potentially provide housing to these people. So, yeah, I think if you're so inclined and you have the time, I think it's important for us to get the word out and the name out of the ITMEC being available for this level of competition and uh Hosting this level of event. Thank you, uh, thank you uh, Councillor Freely. Uh, Councillor Barabu? Yeah, I agree 100. percent We need to get the application uh, uh, process uh, out there. If you take a look, um, the um, uh, curling uh, instance in, uh, that's uh, part of the Quad Cities has had big events uh, there, and they've been profitable and they've been very good for world. Uh, um, uh, stuff so get that out there and we'll worry about the hotel spaces afterwards okay thank you councillor johnson i support this um but i would request that if when we submit the the application we let uh, other folks know that we have submitted an application so that it doesn't sneak up on us and all of a sudden there's this big surprise that 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 sh the, the other event has to be moved so i think that open communication with them just to let them know right away that we are have the council has approved the submission of this application would be uh, beneficial for us in the long term very good thank you thank you uh, Councilor johnson so uh looking for council action I'll move the application and uh, corresponding correspondence. Okay, uh, Council Johnson moves to uh, 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 allow the request for proposals to be moved forward by uh, the City of Virginia for the 2024 IIHF Women's World Championship hockey bid. Is there support? All support, Mayor. Support by Councilor Baraboo. Further discussion, Councilor Biondich. Thank you. And I would also highly recommend that there was a conversation um, with the folks that put on the home boat and travel show. So they are made aware of that. Thank you. May I ask one more question here? Thank you, Councilor Biondich. Councilor Baraboo. Brian, when uh, would you know uh, if it's been accepted, the application? What's the final date for that? So we may not have to bump heads if we're turned down uh, with the uh, home boat. And the um, selection of the site would be made known by I believe it was March 15th of 2023. Okay, so we got plenty of So time. we would know before this year's Home and Boat Show. Or, or 24's Home and Boat Show. Well, we would know before 23's Home yeah. and Boat Show that 24's okay. uh, Home and Boat okay. Show would definitely gotcha. be impacted. Just for the record, we do not have a signed contract with the Home and Boat Show for 2024, but knowing that they do it every year, we want to provide good customer service to our customers. Um, so even though we don't officially have them on the books, we want to move forward and having that communication. And, and we're still working on the 2023 uh, correct proposal. Hopefully uh, it'll get worked out. All right, thank you, uh, Brian. It has been moved and supported to make this application. Is there any further discussion? Hearing seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. And the next item on the agenda is authorized request from Park and Rec Director to apply for grant funding for outdoor fitness area. So aye. moved. Moved to approve by Councilor Johnson Sorry. and supported by Councilor Biondich. Is there any further discussion? Councilor uh, Freely. I don't know if I missed it, but at what location? 
Well, um, location to be determined. If you remember, I believe it was two years ago, I came requesting application to provide, or I came seeking permission to apply for a grant from the National Fitness Campaign for an outdoor fitness park. We had it narrow. We had three sites um, to consider: one in Midway, um, the one by the old Natural Food Co-op, and one in Rotary Park. Um, but the caveat from the council at that point was the additional $90,000 of matching funds. Um, we, we would need to find funding for that rather than using general fund money. We never found that funding, that $90,000, so we ended up um, declining that, um, the funds from National Fitness Campaign. It has come across my desk that um, this grant is again available. Grant deadline is February 1st for the National Fitness Campaign. But this year, there is a national company that is offering um, 10, 10 locations in the state of Minnesota to match the funding that is needed. So if we were selected as one of those tens, there would be no cost out of the general fund for this project. So that is why I'm coming at this time, because it's a potential meeting that funding gap um, by submitting these applications. So the, the uh the agenda item is to authorize uh, you to provide to apply for the grant. So, look right. for council action. Mayor, also move that uh, we allow uh, our park and rec director to apply for the grants for this outdoor uh, recreation uh, fitness area. Okay, moved by Councilor Barabu to apply for the grant. Is there support? I believe it was already moved and supported. It was? Yeah. Well, yes. uh, this 70-year-old brain uh, malfunctioned, so it has been moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? Uh, hearing and seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank Larry, you, Brian. Larry, don't feel bad. My brain's older. <laughs> the next sometimes things don't aff 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 affect me, but sometimes they do. So, Okay. Yeah. Next item, please. The next item on the agenda. Is I, then this, I do not expect an answer today. I just want to get on the public record that we did finally get the report regarding the repairs that are needed at Ascension Virginia Clinic due to the insurance claim from 2018. Um, of course, costs have gone up. As, this is just an estimate, but we need to formulate a plan on how we're going to get these repairs done. If we intend to get the repairs done, are we going to approach Ascension about taking over the building when the bond's done? So it's just a future discussion we need to have. I just wanted to get this out there in the public record that we do have that document now. So uh, we have X amount of dollars, and then the, the estimates came higher. It's at three point five million. Pardon? Three point five million. Uh, as opposed to the eight hundred and some thousand. Eight hundred and some thousand we have in escrow. Yes. Yep. Very good. Thank you, yep. Councilor Paulson. Thank you, Mayor. That was my question. Um, so we, if we could walk through the process. In twenty eighteen, we made a claim, or we got actually paid a claim. We got paid a. And when was the claim? I thought the claim was years prior to that. It, it did not finish until 2018. Let me yeah, let me reiterate that. We got the funds in 2018 from a claim that happened in 2013. I think so. I was going to say 14. Yeah, 13, yeah. 14. Yeah, because we ended up going to court. So if you remember, there was a very long lawsuit, and we had to sue the contractors and the designers and a lot of all that okay. litigation took some time. Okay, so then at the the end result, we got the city got paid in 2018. Correct. The balance of whatever was and was eight hundred thousand dollars that was put into an escrow account. Is that correct? correct? What at U.S. Bank? Yes, at, and, and we, had, we had done some some repairs already. Correct. That was remaining was the eight hundred thousand was remaining to finish the repairs that are needed listed in that report. So we had done some of the repairs and paid out whatever. So what's what's left in that fund is eight hundred thousand. The estimation, which is just an estimation, was three point one. I think it said in there. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then part of the discussion that we need to have going forward is, are we going to do those repairs? Are we going to wait if building costs come down? Um, or are we going to negotiate with Essentia regarding Correct. the building? So those are the options that are kind of put forth on the table at this yeah, point? And, yes. Correct. And I don't have an answer from Essentia. They have a copy of the report. I have not heard back from them since then. 
Um, I do feel that after the first of the year, they probably will contact us to start talking about what are we going to do with this. So we just need to start coming up with a plan what we want to do. Okay. And then um, how many of that, of those, I don't know if it was requests for proposals, or if it was just quotes, how did we obtain this quote? This was the um, part of the litigation. Encompass Engineering was the engineering firm brought in that was a third party, separate from everybody that was involved. And that's who we had redo the quote since they did the original one back for the litigation. So um, I don't mean to be long winded, but that's with okay. this, with the lawsuit that went forward, was it was it determined that we had to go through a third party and we couldn't go through our own? We were all named. They were all named in the litigation. OK. OK. So we couldn't. Could we go and revisit this with a different company to quote? Absolutely. We could. We could absolutely have another company do it. Um, where is Encompass from? Are they cities? I don't know. I believe so. Yeah, I think the litigation required a third party. It did. Uh, that separate, was my question. Separate third party. That's what it was required. That's why we use them. Minnetonka. Minnetonka. So I'm just, I mean, I'm wondering, can, did they stipulate who the third party had to be, or can we just have a third party... I mean, just say, okay, we're going to put it out there and see what we get back. I'm just concerned that these prices are way out of alignment. We, we can now. We can now. I'll, I'll go out for proposals. And, and so that's proposals. part of the larger discussion that we have to have. So that would just be my thought process going forward. All right. Sorry to be long. Thank you. No, it is. Uh, during litigation, a third party... Uh, was required. They got encompassed. But now that it's the litigation is over, we received the funds. The case is closed. We have the money in hand. It's in the bank. And now we uh, are going to do these repairs so we can get whatever quotes we want in which to do so. Is that correct, Rick? Correct. All right. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Johnson. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to, to make it official. I'll move that we enter the report into the record. Um, and so I'll do that first. All right, Councilor Johnson makes a motion to uh, place this uh, uh, engineer report of facade repairs at the Essential Clinic in the official record. Is there support? I'll support, Mayor. Support by Councilor uh, Barabu. Is there any further discussion? Uh, Councilor Barabu. Yes, um, I said in uh, originally when we did this with uh, Encompass many years ago, and they did a really good job of, of the engineering firm of doing this. So the report can be used by anybody when we go out for um, bids on this uh, project for repairs. And we might save uh, some dollars uh, on this uh, project. I've got a couple other thoughts when we get down the road a little bit here. But um, uh, I think what uh, Councillor Johnson proposed is the right first step. Okay, thank you. Has been moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? Councilor Paulson, anybody? Okay, no further discussion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Councilor Johnson? I will also move to authorize staff to continue working on this um, internally and externally as needed so that we can keep moving forward. Okay, does, does that include uh, future discussions with the Essentia? Yes, internal and external. Okay, thank you very much. A motion by Councilor Johnson. Is there support? I'll support again, Mayor. Uh, we had two supports there, one by Councilor Biondich, one by Councilor Birbo. So we'll go with Councilor Biondich's support. Is there any further discussion? A hearing and seeing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Item number seven is a proposed internship agreement for the fire department. This uh, is not something we solicited. This is somebody that came forward to us that's going to school for a degree in public health. And so they called and asked, is it potential that they could come work with our Virginia Fire Department as part of their internship program? Sure, that, that makes perfectly good sense for 2025. Should we hold this in abeyance until then? Or? Oh, no, I'm only joking. Please uh, disregard that uh, ludicrous comment. Uh, Fire Chief Fredrickson, how are you? I'm good. Hello, everybody. So give us a little rundown. So the rundown is our Captain Mike Rudabush said his daughter was uh, in public health uh, as a college course and uh, as a career option 
or career path, excuse me, and wondering if we had, would have any internship availability for her. So we spoke briefly about what some things she could do, uh, and uh, it kind of fits into what Deputy Chief Jonason and I are doing right now on every level. It's just assessing what we're doing, try to find our blind spots and improve any way we can. What better way than someone with public health education coming in and jumping right into that that strategy. Okay, thank you. Well, you know, from my perspective, internships are very important, particularly in the public sector. We had them when I was working down the metro area. Internships led to uh, our community service officers, which led to potential hiring and to school for those kind of things. They learned a lot, and we were able to provide an internship program for somebody who was looking for a career in whatever path that might be, and at the same time providing, you know, uh, all the information, the education that you provide, and uh, they, those interns can bring that back to whatever facility or educational institution they're working for. I think it's a great program as long as you have the proper mechanisms in place for, uh, for the agreement. I'm all for that. So, Councillor Johnson. Hey, first of all, Deputy Chief, um, no, his name falling on the head. Um, Jonathan. Jonathan. Jonathan, that was good. Uh, that, 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 I appreciate that. Um, I think this is a great opportunity because this will also open up for future um, the agreement. My understanding is this is a blanket agreement and then other folks can be coming in uh, in the future as well. And I think um, this is just another step towards the open and transparent stuff that we, you all are working hard at the fire department to do. Um, so I will, I will move this agreement for, with um, the university. I got to scroll back up through the pages here, University of Minnesota, um, through the Applied Human Services Department. A motion by Councilor Johnson, is there support? Support by Councilor Freely for the discussion. I think it might be expanding at other educational institutions as well, but the basic agreement's in place for this particular issue, but it could be applied elsewhere as other uh, interns uh, may come to apply. So thank you, Councilor uh, Baraboo, and then over to Councilor Paulson. Just a quick, uh, Question for you. Now, this internship, um, when I read there, are we looking at uh, paying her for doing the internship or are we looking for oh. the individual? As most of the places they're doing now from universities, the individual has to pay. I know they do in nursing now, I know they do in, in physical therapy, where it becomes part of their tuition. They pay to have that internship. What are we looking at here? Because that's blank in your recommendation. Are we looking to pay and have more expenses on this? Or are we looking for uh, the individual to pay like most universities are doing now? My conversations with Captain Rudabush, nothing about wage or compensation came up. Britt, can you shed any light on that? I, I can just tell you that our normal interns, the one we do have is at the library, and she makes fourteen eighty. Is that what Spatia makes? Um, fourteen eighty per hour. We're looking at just an hourly rate if we do that. Correct, yeah, correct. I can agree probably and, to that. Um, but. Our current intern has a similar, uh, for the University of Minnesota system, a similar, and they do periodic checks with the supervisor asking how are they doing, are they meeting these goals, this is what we're looking for. Um, there's lots of paperwork that goes with it. <laughs> so. Okay, so so then we're not looking at uh, just a straight hourly with no benefits and stuff? It's a straight hourly, no benefits, just hours worked, nothing okay. guaranteed. Um, I can agree to that, thank you. Yep. Yeah. All right, thank you. Uh, Councillor Paulson. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, if you look at the um, agreement, it's um, under item four, financial terms. It says financial arrangements, arrangements between our program and your site, including stipends, benefits, and other costs as agreed by the parties are set forth in attachment. And I don't see any attachment in here except for a chart um, on the appendix A, that has um, what their goals are, and uh, but nothing in terms of financial compensation. So if this is a blanket agreement, I think we need to have those um, that filled in. Correct. And so what we would do if if the council approves the agreement, we'll have a resolution we'll approve on Tuesday with that dollar amount in there. That they're why they're here, they're paid, and that will become attachment B. Thank you. Okay, so, and, and that would be blanket for any intern that would come with public safety then? That's just this agreement. This agreement's specific to this person. It's for specific this time to this person. And yep. then it's, a it's um, assigned uh, an hourly 
wage, correct, which was the AFSCME student labor wage. Okay, so so if that could just be attached in here. Yes, yep. This is the first time we've had an intern actually at the public safety, at least the fire department. We used to have one at PD one time, but. And, and that's some of my confusion too, is actually we've had one, it was a, but strictly a firefighting student about 10 years ago. So there was no wage, it was just a ride along essentially, but we called it an internship. I don't remember those particulars, but. And there's two types of internships. One is voluntary internship where the person comes in, internship looking for an opportunity to maybe uh, hone their skills and get a profession, you do the background check on everything's fine and you move forward. This internship is through the University of Minnesota. It's an educational internship to enhance uh, the uh, educational uh, course of uh, that, that they have moving forward. So part of that agreement is to pay. So when I was working, we paid some volunteers were volunteers. We paid them. We didn't pay. And but those that came through the university, some other educational person like Metro State University, we paid them a stipend. Uh, move along with with progress reports uh, uh, conducted uh, uh, periodically at the request of the education institution from the internship uh, uh, entity, which in this case would be the fire EMS. Right? Okay. Thank you, Mayor. I, I think it's a fantastic opportunity, and I would agree that an intern should be paid. Um, my last question is, how long would this internship, internship be for? Is there a specified time? If it's the entire length of her planned career, she has to be in school. Um, and it's from 12 one through 11 27 It may not exceed five years, but she has to be in school for this agreement to be in effect. So in theory, it's a three-year internship opportunity? Correct. Correct. If if, if the individual in chooses to st stick with it. And so I, it's not a big deal. I mean, I'm sure it's in your budget, but is it in your budget to have an intern? That's a good question. I, I <laughs> didn't know there was going to be a wage assigned to it. I could not be, and I couldn't get a hold of Mike Rudabush it's prior to this. It's fairly nominal, but, though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I believe it to be. I don't have that in front of me, though. And then I guess I would say, like, how many, maybe if we could get more details just on the, how many, like, is it a, is it a summer thing? Is it a full-time thing? Is it just a semester, one semester? Of, I mean, I, I guess I'd like a little bit more detail. I'm in full support of it, but I'd like a little bit more detail on that if we could. Thank you. It has been moved and supported. And maybe we could have that information for the council meeting, but it's been moved as part to move into the council meeting for consideration of final approval. And hopefully we can provide that information that's requested by Councilor Paulson by the next council meeting on this Tuesday. Would that be possible to do that? We could try to do that. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? Uh, Councilor Biondich. Thank you. And you brought up an interesting point that you didn't have an answer for. So my question is, where does the money come from? Is it in your budget? So many variables there. If this is a, th if you're asking me for a three year full time, I'm concerned. But if it's an evaluate as we go and we've, you know, we're talking a couple months, I have no worries. But yeah. Well, what's so, the length of the insurance? The length of the, I'm sorry, go ahead. So when you say a couple months, if it doesn't, if we don't have the funds in your budget, is it, do we terminate the internship or how is that handled? That would be my understanding. If we okay. ran out of work or were unable to fund it, it would have to. So right now it's not in your budget. Again, that's a first for me. I don't even know what, Sherry, can you help out with that? Sure. I, what Where funds have come out of and we've never had an internship, let alone a paid one. And well, well, go ahead, Sherry. Okay. To be quite honest with you, this is the first I've seen it. And, and like Chief uh, Fredrickson said, he didn't realize there was money or a wage attached. So I'd have to say, no, it's not budgeted. But um, I'm sure we can look under other professional services and try to tag it there or put it in the overtime or, I'm sorry, not overtime, but part-time service, tag it there. We're talking probably $2,000 maybe at the most because she's not working, this, this intern is not working 40 hours a week. Okay, uh, thank you. Hour for hour here and there. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, Jody, would you come up here for a moment please and talk, to, to tell us about your internship and how's that working for you? 
Yeah, so and, and um, you have that budget in your budget? We did. So we did put in our budget. And what we ended up doing is we had a summer library intern. And then she requested, um, because it's part of her, she goes to actually to Crookston, and she wanted to continue on. And we just limited it to 14 hours a week. And ours is paid. But the one thing that um, to verify is she may not be able to be paid, depending, because is this a graduate degree program or an undergrad? I believe it was undergrad. Okay, because they're depending on what the so if she's required to have an internship, she may not be able to be paid. So there are she's got he's going to have to check that too because every internship mine is just done because of through her major, it's part of her she's a writing major so this is realmed in her English writing type area. So those are the things. So that's what we looked at to see if we and we just kept her at like I said fourteen hours a week through the semester. Um, she actually ends next week because of finals and doesn't start again until the new school year, which is after um, like mid January. Does that help? There's a lot of different things that you can do with an internship, but a lot of it's going to be based on what the requirements of her internship are. So it may or may not be paid from yeah. my experience with different internships, because that's why I asked if I was graduate. I know that in my previous position, we had graduate. Um, internships, they could not be paid because it was part of their degree. Right, and that's what I try to explain the two different internship programs, right? One is paid, one's non paid. So thank it's you. Depend thank, on you. Hers. <laughs> thank you, Jody, for You're that. Okay, it works out really well. Okay, uh, Councilor uh, Biondich, please continue. Thank you for that clarification, Jody. Um, and if you could check to see if it is paid through the school or if she cannot receive payment, that would be great and Will not put a, put a hurt on our budgets. Thank you. Will do. Well, I, th I think it's moved and supported to move forward with it. I think we need to take a look at uh, the exclusive agreement that's uh, applied here. Uh, I know this is first for all of us. The, the internship agreement here is pretty uh, like a blanket agreement. There isn't even a name attached to it or wage or scale or whether that's where we possibly could do that. So if you could explore that potential even more and uh, have that prepared for us, uh, maybe by the next council meeting or maybe not by the next committee homing, I don't know when this internship is scheduled to start or when you'd like to schedule start, but if there's a time frame there, we should have that information available whether or not she can or cannot accept uh, a stipend and if it's part of her undergraduate curriculum or not. So, but it has moved to support to, uh, to address uh, approve the an internship program in some capacity, whether it's paid or not paid, was something for you to uh, to try to determine. If you determine that it's unpaid, then we don't have to worry about a budget issue. If it's turned to be paid, then we'll have to consider that as well. So it has been moved and supported to move forward with the internship program. But I but before we vote, would you read back the uh, uh, the motion so that uh, we all understand it? Moved by Councillor Johnson, supported by Councillor Friedlieb, to approve the intern agreement, internship agreement between the City of Virginia and the University of Minnesota, effective December 1st, 2022, through November 30th, 2027. Okay, so that's the motion on the floor. Further discussion, Councillor Friedlieb. My support is just based on past experience with internships. Typically, an inter internship that's been requested for an undergraduate is for course credit fulfillment, essentially. So the, the, the pay factor, I don't know that I'd, you'd want to find out if she had any intent and purpose of being paid for this as opposed to just earning credit for the course that she's trying to complete. So that's what I was anticipating, to provide her the opportunity on job training for course credit requirement. And let's find out if that's the case. Hello. Okay, so uh, further discussion, we might have to amend that motion. Further discussion, Councilor Biondich. That's kind of what I was going to ask, if it could be amended. I mean, I, I have no problem with an internship, none at all. Um, my concern always is the city budget and where the money is coming from. So if all those could be explored um, and come back, I would really appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, we'll move back to the maker of the motion, Councilor Johnson. Any, uh, any changes or adjustments that you would, uh, would be willing to give with, in respect to your motion? So what would need to be changed? I've just asked that this we move forward for the council meeting, which all those questions could be solved by Tuesday, because we get our packets on Fridays and it could be reviewed. Correct? Okay. So let's, I'm, not, I'm not willing to make any amendments at this time. Okay. So we have no motion now, right? 
The same motion. Yes. Okay, let's vote on it. Motion on the floor. Any further discussion? Okay, I hear uh, Councillor Paulson. Can we read the motion back one more time? Moved by Councillor Johnson, supported by Councillor Friedlieb to approve the internship agreement between the City of Virginia and the University of Minnesota, effective December 1st, 2022 through November 30th, 2027. I think I have a hard time supporting that the way it's written because I want further clarification on the on the parameters of the internship and the the finance piece of it. And to be I, honest, <laughs> and, and I kind of I kind of concur too because uh, there's no name attached to this. So if it's an internship between the. Uh, oh, oh, was it a blanket one, or is there a specific name that's going to be attached to it? So I'd like to see something more specific in the in the in the internship agreement as well, Pam. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, as and that's what I look at it as. It's a blanket, and anybody that is applying or was going to school at the U of M could be in Virginia, and then a separate where it asks for attachment on page five. That would be a separate agreement that would list that person's name and wage or whatever they're going to get paid. Because this is just with the city of Virginia and the U of, of M. So, okay, but I could you. be wrong unless the. Uh, Britt? Okay, that's correct. Okay, uh, Councillor Johnson. Okay, thank you. So it has been moved and supported. Uh, as uh, uh, the motion stands as presented and the second stands as presented, is there any further discussion? A hearing and seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? No. No. Roll call, please. Beyond it? No. Johnson? Yes. Aaron Dilley is absent. Cuffey? No. Baraboo? Yes. Friedlieb? Yes. Paulson? No. Three time. Motion fails three to three. Uh, we don't have uh, uh, the other counselor here. Uh, and uh, the reason I voted no and is because I'd like to see something more specific, the name in there and whether there's going to be a stipend or not. If, if, if we got that information prior to the next council meeting, I would certainly approve the internship. I think uh, the person that's applying for it, 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 it's a good fit for that to be done. But I'd like to see, I don't like to see the blanket where we just approve the whole thing for the University of Minnesota with not, with not knowing any of the specifics. So uh, that's where I am. So I'm looking for some other action, potentially, Councilor Johnson. But we would have all of that information by Tuesday for the formal approval. I was just speeding, getting ex expediting the process. So, um, all of we this meeting just authorizes staff to move forward, and then all of that would be in our Friday packet to look at and and move forward. So, um, I, I, thank you. Yeah, but that's not what the motion says. That, that's why, why that's why I have trouble with Sophia. If we could maybe clarify it in the motion a little bit. With, with all due respect, though, Mayor, that's how the process works. We approve it here, and we cannot approve it at my, on Tuesday's meeting if none of that information was provided. They're going to provide that information for Tuesday's meeting. So that 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 we have to do a different motion to specifically tell them to put that information in there is kind of, kind of counterproductive to me because they were already gonna do that. It's gonna come to us ready to approve. This meeting just approves the motion moving forward. So that, that's that? what my frustration is. Well, uh, thank you for your frustration, but I'm looking for some clarification myself and so are two other counselors as well. So first we'll go to Pam, then we'll go back to Councillor Paulson, and maybe we can resolve this to get it to the next council meeting. Councillor, uh, I mean, Pam. Thank you, Mayor. So if this is a blanket, the addendum or the attachment would be presented on next Tuesday, and there could be five other people that would have an attachment with their names on it that wanted to be an internship with the city and the U of M. So each person that would come forward, maybe next year it'll be somebody else. This agreement would stand for five years. That's how I'm looking at it, but I could be wrong. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilor Paulson. Thank you, Mayor. And that's, I think that's the language I'm looking to get clarified. I want some legal clarification, what, what kind of an agreement we're entering into. I think it's a fantastic opportunity. I think we just need to, um, we just need to know what the city is entering into and how, you know, is it a wage thing? Is it a budget thing? Like we need to understand what the hours look like, what, you know, what your department can afford, what it can afford. Um, uh, if it is part of a, a class requirement or not, but I don't even want to move this forward to the council meeting because we really don't wouldn't have discussion at that point. I think we should allow allow uh, Chief Fredrickson to get more information from the University of Minnesota and then come back for a full discussion at the Committee of the Whole. Is this something we can afford in the budget um, if it's a, a 20 till 2020 is a three year contra blanket five year, it, you know, so if we're putting that out there and we're signing this contract, potentially we could have interns for five years. And do we have that in our budget to do that? So I think before we even move this forward to the council, we really should kind of look back. I, I think it's fantastic that, you know, there's this opportunity, but I, I think that we need to get more clarification and then also clarification from, um, from our attorney, if that's Pam, that's the way I'm interpreting it like you are. Um, but I think we need a little bit more clarification on that. So I'd rather not, I'd rather have this come back, um, to the committee of the whole, the uh, next committee, of the whole meeting for us to have a more information before we just say, okay, let's put it before the council on Tuesday, um, and approve it without knowing in five years, is this going to be something we can approve with our budget within the department? So that's kind of where I'm coming from. Thank uh, you. Uh, thank you. And uh, uh, with all due respect uh, to, to the motion, uh, it's nice to have the information, you know, is it, are they being paid? Are they not being paid? Those kind of things. So it's not in the motion that they're going to bring forward all that information. We even know that we're going to have that information available. But for me, I don't like to put a blanket thing for five years with an internship requirement based upon that. It should be individual specific, in my opinion. So each individual who wants to be an intern comes back with this and they sign this agreement moving forward. So instead of doing it for five years, we do it on a case by case basis. But uh, that's where we're at right now. So um, I'm willing to allow uh, revote to have it move forward with those specific uh, items in there provided you have this information available for us to consider at the next council meeting that's fine but that's not what the motion says i understand the intent of the motion but that's not what it says so anything else yeah i if i could uh councillor freely I, I thought we were in the position to you know have the specifics and details provided to us on tuesday at which time then we would vote yay or nay as to whether or not we want to pay for that or accept that particular person or whatever. And that still opens it up to five years, but I think we've got a staff that it's exceedingly professional in this fire department that the more kids that we can get involved with is going to be actually beneficial to recruiting for what we have in the city. So I think the sooner we move forward with this, the better. And so I really thought we had it positioned for us to be able to look at who was going to be doing this and what the specifics of that particular agreement would have been. But um, maybe you can bring that to us on Tuesday and we can go from there. Or can this no longer be on the agenda? It can be. You can make another motion to add that stuff in there. Make sure that that's available. Have the information available to us. I know that's the intent of the motion, but that's not what it says. Yeah, I would make a motion then to propose an internship agreement with the fire department specific to the individual that has sought application for such and move forward with that. Okay, that's your motion? Yeah, I don't, you know, and then we'll get the specifics and details. And at that time, if we find that it's it's a, a cost we can't incur, then we would be able to vote it yes or no. But I think moving it forward with the intent of what we're trying to accomplish with what we have at the fire department and the students that could be involved with our staff, I think the sooner we do that, the better, especially with the University of Minnesota. Okay, did you get his motion? I mean, I, I understand it, but you know, you have to have a record of it. And, you, and the, your motion is?
I can go along with that. Yeah. yeah, I can go along with that. You know, we're not approving that blanket agreement. Your motion is for them to put together an internship program and bring back and, and bring that back to us for the next council meeting. Have all that information. That's your motion. Is there support? I'll support for discussing it further. Okay, support for the discussion. Well, first, we'll go to you for second, and then we'll go to Councilor uh, Paulson, and then uh, anybody else. Councilor Baraboo. Yeah, one thing you've, uh, everybody's missing here is that it doesn't have to be a, a blanket five-year internship. It can be one year at a time with an extension at the end of the agreement that uh, they get first opportunity uh, to renew it if they're still in the program. They may not even be in the program, uh, the individual. Seen lots of that happen throughout uh, my kids' college careers where the person drops out and doesn't want to do the internship uh, the next year. You just have to make it one year at a time. It can be up to five years, but only one year at a time. And you have to reapprove it the next year for them. That's simple as that. That's all you need to do. It's available for five years, but it has to be five years long. Nothing in this thing from the university says that. Oh, simple as that. Okay, there's a motion on the floor by Councilor Freely, been supported by Councilor Baraboo. Is there any further discussion? Councilor Johnson. This agreement is between the Regents and the United S University of Minnesota through its Applied Ser Human Services Department Public Health Program, quote, the University and the City of Virginia. The University and affiliates sharing common goals of education, desiring facilitate a relationship for the purpose of providing educational experience at the affiliate sites for certain university students enrollment program. And it goes on to say, what Pam is, is saying very well, this is an agreement between the city and the university to have people come here. Period. It has nothing to do with the individuals. We cannot have an intern in this city if we don't agree to the university's agreement. This is just like when we give an agreement to somebody and say, this is what you need to do to have people do what you want for the city. So I think there's two issues here then, and they're being mushed together. We need to approve an agreement with the university that yes, we're willing to take individuals into, our, into the city. It's the whole city, it's not fire department specifically. Support. And then it comes down to the individual agreements and what they're paying under it. So we're, we're by approving the, the motion on the floor, we're approving something with an entity we don't have any agreement with. We're, we're, we're creating this document that doesn't that can exist because we haven't told the university yes, we want to be a place where you put your students. Um, and then all the other details about payment and stuff come second. So um, I'm not going to support the motion because we have nothing to base it on because we don't have an agreement with the university at this time. Here, I'm going to pull back my support on that uh, motion and rescind my support. And I would rescind my motion and make a new motion to... Oh, hang, hang on, hang on. Okay, so... Can I uh, just have to a make, discussion? Just a, well, I'm sorry. If we want just, to just make it clear. Uh, the motion uh, uh, that was provided by Councillor... Um, Freelieb uh, has been rescinded and the second also rescinded with respect to uh, that motion. So consider that a, a rescinded motion. And so uh, I'd just like to say my concern isn't the fact that we entered an agreement here or not. And you, you, we, can, we can enter the agreement, but there, then there has to be, I think, a second motion because we don't know if there's, if there's stipend opportunities or not. So if we're entering, if we're approving the agreement, I think there has to be some direction to staff to find out, you know, if there's money in the budget, if this is going to be a paid position, all those kind of stuff, because in that agreement, it does have to do with stipend and those kind of things. So if we make a motion to enter the agreement now, as Councilor uh, Johnson uh, uh, proposed, then it goes back to the city council to approve based upon the blanket agreement with no name attached. We just, we just apply it. And then, and then when somebody comes forward, we utilize that agreement. And so we can make that decision yes or no then about whether it's stipend, whether it's not stipend, and the information that will be provided by us for that. But that we want to make sure that that's part of the motion, that it says that, that we're going to, that staff is going to provide this information moving forward. It's not just a blanket approval. I get it. I get approval of, of, of the entire packet. I get that. But the key is, is that when you're making a motion to this uh, alone, and then it comes to the city council, our, or, or, or the answer for information that we want is based upon the internship we're asking for. And so I don't think a blank agreement for five years makes sense to me. 
But let's have another motion. Councilor Paulson. Thank you, Mayor. So this is getting really frustrating to me because I want to approve this because it makes sense and it's going to be helpful for the department. What, what I think we're stuck on our logistics. And I think for me personally, when we when things are like this are brought up, we need to have way more information. And I know this is a first time thing for you, but to me, like when I okay, so I'm just reading this. I'm a lay person, not an attorney. Um, it says under five point five, it is specifically agreed that either that neither party shall be responsible for costs or expenditures incurred by the other in in the conduct of the clinical education and training program, except as expressly provided in this agreement. Okay, there's nothing expressly provided in this agreement. What about equipment that this intern would need? I'm assuming that this intern would need to be fitted with gear. Is that correct? If they're doing ride-alongs or they need protective gear. They would, that would no. They would not need any protective gear, uh, and I'm, it's my understanding that it won't, won't be a ride along basis. It's going to be more policy procedures. So. Okay, so things like that would be helpful for like the scope. Here's the scope of what we're looking to do with an intern. Then, with a blanket agreement, do we want to have an internship? A five year blanket agreement, and then the attachments would be attachment A this potential intern, and this is what the wage is, and da 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 specific to that person. And I agree, we, have to, we would have to pass this agreement first, but before we do that, I need to understand what, what that looks like. What are we talking about when we're saying, let's do an internship here? You know, like, is this person, um, and, and it, this isn't person specific it's like what is the department doing so say this person isn't there and we want to continue the program um what does that look like what are your needs for an intern coming in um and then what do, how would that equate to dollars like i'm i want to approve this i want to move this forward but i think we we're not doing it correctly so if someone can rephrase things so that it makes sense to how we move forward. But those, those questions still need to be answered. Are there any costs associated um, with anything else? It does say that the, the, um, the agreement may be terminated by either party within six months. So there is an out of six, after six months, or, or I guess at least six months written notice. But I think that we should have our attorney review this um, and, and get back to us on this. So we're making a, a wise vote on how we're conducting if we're going to start an, a new internship program, which I think would be fantastic. And, and to, you know, like Councillor Freeleep said, you guys are bar, like hands down the best in terms of your training, that it would be just a, a really a hand in glove fit. But I think we need to, if we're creating an internship program, we need to know what we're doing. That's all I'm trying to say. So if, if those things could be provided, I'm, I would love to move forward. I just, from right now where I'm sitting and what I'm reading, I'm going through my head and then financially, how does that work? And then we do, if it is a blanket agreement, then it is a blanket agreement. And the attachment would actually be the individual that's applying for the internship. So that would tell me though, then we need to set a parameter. Are we going to allow one intern per year or are five interns per year? I mean, is it based on applications for that internship? It's almost like you're creating an internship program. So I think we need to think about it in that respect. And I, I don't know who, who researched all this. I love the fact that it's all, that's all here, but I think we need to be a little bit more well-rounded and when we have the new public safety building, how awesome will that be for, for training capabilities for a new student to come in and have that opportunity to have everything state of the art and to be participate in that? I think it's fantastic. But I think we, we need to do our due diligence on the backside and say, okay, here's what we think an internship should look like and then develop the program parameters around that, then enter into the agreement with the University of Minnesota, then solicit your <coughs> candidates to come forward like that to me is how the, in my mind that's how it makes sense so that's all i'd like to say thank you uh, uh, okay thank you councillor paulson uh Pam? thank you um exactly what you said councillor paulson i think that's the 
attachment should be an actual form that lists everything about the person. And if they're going to be working with on the ambulance or fire department and what they actually are doing at school and things like that, and then whether they're getting paid, whether they're not supposed to get paid, just draft a form that would entail all that and probably talk to the U of M to see if, or what other cities do this and how they handle it. But ultimately, uh, Councillor Freely. But ultimately, I mean, weren't we being asked today as a city council, do we not want our fire department to have an affiliation with the University of Minnesota to provide an internship through the Virginia Fire Department? And this is what we would be agreeing to. It, it, it's a blanket agreement. It's not just with the fire department. This is a blanket agreement for any internship, number one. And, and number two, you have, uh, you have a, we don't have an internship policy or, 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 or anything to, to fall back on. It just said we're going to agree to an internship, but what does an internship look like? What is the internship with the fire department? What's the internship with the police department or any other entity in that regard? I'm assuming Britt felt that the city of Virginia entering into an agreement with the University of Minnesota to provide internships through the city was a good idea, and I think it is too. And it might start with one at the fire department, and if that's the case, we would get the specifics on that student and what the parameters of that particular internship would be. So I don't know, we sometimes get so complicated when I don't think we really need to. I, I think it'd be a great idea to be affiliated to the city of Virginia with the University of Minnesota, provide internships beyond even the fire department for that matter. I'm assuming that's what you thought, Brett, when you brought this forward. And so today was, yes, I, I would think it'd be in best interest of the city to have an affiliation with the University of Minnesota to provide internships through the city of Virginia. And that's what we would have agreed to today. That doesn't obligate us in any way financially to anything or to anybody for that matter because the university could say we'd like you to provide an internship for student a when we get the specifics and the details on that we say mm, no we can't really afford that or we don't want to it doesn't really obligate us to anything truly i don't think so so uh, for me i mean i know it's it's i know it's being uh, a lot of minutia. But the thing is, is you have, from my perspective, you have this internship agreement through the University of Minnesota. So what happens if uh, the Masaba uh, College or whatever the new you know, the College North wants to do it or somebody else wants to do it, do the same affiliation agreement, we would look at it and be obligated to prove that as well, depending no matter what internship program, whether it's a law enforcement program, inhibiting or whatever the case may be. But this particular document, document is, says, the reasons of the University of Minnesota through its applied human resources department and public health program. No other program within the University of Minnesota. Only that part of the program. Only through the Applied Human Science Department of Public Health Program. That's what I'm concerned about. I, I, I'm, I'm all for putting a internship together. I'm all for having it moving forward. I'm all for uh, uh, getting uh, uh, that candidate in, in involved in the process. But we're proving something that would just come before us on the table and we're making a quick uh, moving forward. I think Culture Johnson has, uh, on many occasions, says we don't want to be rushing through this stuff. And I think in this particular case, that's what we're doing. Uh, Councilor Paulson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so could I make a motion to move it forward? Because I think we all want to make it, have it move forward, but so we have a process in place. Could I make a motion to direct city staff to work on creating an internship program with the University of Minnesota for the fire department or for public safety, anything that has to do with the clinical that's described in the paragraph that you just read? Yeah, you could make that motion, but this blanket document says applied human science department and public health program. Okay, so, so then I would be specific to that. So I, the motion would be to direct city staff to work on creating an internship program with the stated parameters uh, with, the, with, the universe, at, with the University of, of Minnesota as stated in its document. That's the same motion that Councilor Johnson made, so. No, because we'd be a step, no, no, it's not. it is not. We'd be established, the departments would, Britt would work with the departments <laughs> okay, to establish a, an internship program. I'm on your frequency. Then once that program, we, they come back with what the program looks like, then we would enter into the agreement with the specifics 
with the University of Minnesota, then it would move to the specific intern that would be applying or blanket interns that would be applying. But first, we would be, my motion would be to have city staff work together in creating an internship program because that's not what, we don't, we don't have that yet. Correct. So if we can create a program parameter and then that, I guess that's what it is, tying that, creating our program, then we'd get the documents, we'd sign the, this document, this blanket document, then interns would come in and submit their applications to be an intern. Then there, based on that would be attachment A, B, C, D, E, whatever, however many interns we decide to approve. But we need to have a program to approve that we are doing an internship program. That, I, in my opinion, that's moving it forward. Okay. Uh, I'm on your frequency then also. Thank you. So uh, there is a motion on the floor. Do you have that motion by Council? We don't Carlson? have a program. They, their program affiliation, huh? but we don't have a program for internships. Uh, Councilor Paulson? Councilor Paulson, would you please re repeat your motion? Uh, to direct city staff to work on creating an internship program with the University of, of Minnesota as stated in the document provided. Okay, there's a motion on the floor by Councilor Paulson. Is there support for that motion? I would support that motion if it moves forward the opportunity for the student that has been requesting to have this done for her. Yeah, and I think we have to provide that information anyway to the uh, on this to this application to them anyway about what our program contains. Right? They're going to have to know what that internship program looks like. So it's been moved. Is there support? Support. Support by Council Freely. Is there any further discussion, uh, Councilor Biondich? Thank you, Jody. I'm going to call on you. You have an internship program at the library, correct? Yes. So, do you have something set up for that? I mean, we didn't go through all of this when you well, had I interns. Had an intern prior to oh, would you, Jody? Would you please come forward? Please, thank you for that. And so everybody else can hear uh, the question that Councilor Biondich had. Thank you. So the library had an intern before I started. And so due to being closed to the public, um, we did not fill that position for a few years. So we knew we needed assistance last summer and we, it was in our budget and we reprised that position of a library intern. Um, she requested to work more and since we already had her as a library intern we just adjusted her schedule within the realms of what is required by um as a part-time employee so that she can't go over a certain amount of hours um she's at the part-time pay and made sure that we stayed within the employment and hr requirements for the city and i had to fill out paperwork Britt had to sign it so oh. it's a three sheet. It's she fills out her part, what she wants from it. We fill out our part, which is, you know, are you providing training? Do you have a dress code? Um, what kind of like the fact that insurance cover, you know, the stuff that's in a public building, all that kind of stuff. So do you does that money come out of your budget? Yes, or it does. And you have budgeted for that. Yes. So that's kind of where I'm hung up is trying to figure out how you are doing yours where it's in your budget. Yes, but it was already there. So you have to remember that somewhere along the line in previous years, it got approved. Okay. I'm not sure when, but it was prior to me starting. So when, when you're talking about asking for the new... Um, in that information that comes forward, I mean, could there be research done on how it would be funded? Okay, so that would be included in that. Thank you. Thank you, Jody. Okay, uh, there's a motion on the floor. It has been moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? We'll go back to Councilor Paulson, who's going to then back over, then over to Councilor Barabo. Just a quick follow-up follow um, with what Jody is saying. 
That's my point. The beginning point was that somebody prior to Jody put an internship program together with parameters. That is my point. So if we start at that level where we're creating a very new program, which is awesome, well, we need to develop what the program is and then take those next steps. It's like creating a business plan and following it. So that's, I'm all in favor of this. I just feel like we need to, like Jody was saying, they're going to work 14 hours. Is there a dress code? What's the expectations? What are you going to, I would also say, like Pam said, I would include, are you going to be working on the ambulance? Are you going to be on the fire trucks? Is it more administerial or paperwork? <laughs> like, you know, Chief, like when you're developing a program, um, I mean, I guess you guys are going to be the first ones to pilot this. So maybe draft some language together that, you know, where we might have many different interns come and it would be fantastic to get them to come and stay and work here and be a part of our our um, our department. But I think in order for us to do this, I think we should develop what the program looks like. That's all. That's the only, I guess, right where I was going with the development of that uh, and then let's rock it and move it forward and bring that intern in right away. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Councilor Paulson. Councilor Bearable. You know, we're getting way, way too much minutiae in this, in this mess. You don't even start with this motion, basically. You end up having our fire chief here, Britt, and the staff talk to the University of Minnesota. This is for one specific portion of one of their programs are human sciences and health programs. So you have to have an internship that goes around that program that they have. We're not going to know what they're looking for for an internship at the university. You need to talk to them first and find out what they need, what the criteria we've been talking about, whether there's a salary involved, whether there's not that they're looking for. We don't need any motion right now. There's time to do this. They need the research first. There isn't any research. I don't care what any of the counselors say. We have to put the stuff. We can't develop the program without the information from the university, what they're looking for. We can't put it together. Every college at the university will probably come to us and, and ask if we have an internship for their engineering program. The other programs, we need to find out the criteria. This is for one specific portion of the college, and it fits our, our fire department but they need to find out more information from the university. That's where I'm going. I'm, I'm not gonna vote for any blanket thing right now. Get the information, then put it together after we got the information. That's where I'm coming from. Thank you. Okay, uh, read back the motion, please, Pam, and then we'll vote unless there's some other comments. Moved by Councillor Paulson, supported by Councillor Friedley, I believe. Did we have a second? <laughs> uh, we, 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 I put him down because he yeah. was talking. <laughs> <laughs> well, many other issues it was on the agenda as well. So read the motion back, please. Moved by Councillor Paulson, supported by Councillor Friedlieb, to direct city staff to work on creating an internship program with the University of Minnesota as stated in the document provided by the University of Minnesota. Okay, that is your motion. Is there support? There was by Councilor Freely for discussion. For discussion, supported for discussion by Councilor Freely, and we had some significant discussion. So, is there any more discussion with respect to this motion? Is this what you anticipated that you're going to be put on the spot of creating an internship program with the fire department, or did you think that this was just going to be an affiliation with the university and you would be housing that student under their program? Second one. Thank you. That's. They have, it's their program, the university's program. We just provide them the internship, the space to have it, the on-job training. I think we just got too deep in this. And like I said, if we approve that internship and it's going to be cost incurring to us, we can say no. So, okay. but any bit. I just didn't think... Chief Fredrickson came here today with the intention of having to then create their own internal internship program. So I, I guess I, I supported the motion to move it forward, but I don't support them having to create their own internship program when the university is saying, we do this for students if you provide the on 
site space for them to get it accomplished. And typically, like I said, it's for course requirement fulfillment, nothing more. So, okay. Mayor, can I address Councillor Friedlieb's concern? Okay. Uh, okay. We'll go to Councillor uh, Paulson, then back to Councillor Baraboo, and then over to Councillor uh, Beyondich. Councillor Paulson. Maybe the appropriate terminology shouldn't be program, because I'm not asking you to reinvent a program that exists. That's not what I mean. You understand what I'm saying. It's like what we're kind of missing is like what Jody was just talking about with the description of duties and the employment conditions and terms. And that's what that's we don't right. have right now. We have that for aphasia because this was like she said, an existing library intern program or policy that we had in place for many years, which explained what they would be doing and what their duties are. I suspect that the University of Minnesota for this particular program has the same type of document that we filled out for Tasia, which is a five-page thing. It requires who they are, what the class is for. It asks what the job description is going to be, so what are they going to do. In my case, it was pretty specific. And then there's provisions of the internship program, the supervisor, what is expected of the student intern. So the form is pretty well set for the University of Minnesota. So then it's more of getting permission to get that person in there and do that. So I, I think that, you can, that piece. you can request that form and get that form and we can go forward without having to create an internship program. It's And you have to remember, the University of Minnesota is huge. Um, the fact that this one was approved by the regents tells you that this program has gone through all the legal ins and outs. If you are not familiar with the regents, just go watch one of their meetings. Oh, my goodness. Um, but anyway, so from my experience at that level, knowing that that's where I used to work, that work all went into this internship program. So I suspect that he just needs to request the form, and he can probably share it with this group. And, and I feel like that is what the component, maybe the terminology programming is my my mistake in using that terminology, but what I guess maybe Britt can translate what I'm saying, and if that form exists, that's the form we need to see to understand the parameters of how the program is going to work. Should be an internship agreement, and that agreement would be set up between the city and then who, which in this case, I think, are they Twin Cities campus or Duluth? They said Duluth. Duluth campus? Oh, yeah, Duluth campus then. So those would be set up. This one's set mine, up. Is Cro mine is Crookston, so um, I'm assuming it would be a similar type form. So maybe I will change the language in the motion to reflect uh, direct city staff to work on the document between, between the department and the University of Minnesota. Will that satisfy you? And us, I mean all of us, <laughs> that I'm not creating anything tension-wise, but all right. we're moving it forward with the review and evaluation of that. Okay. Give me the amendment to the motion, and then we'll get hopefully an amendment approved by the second, and then we'll continue with the discussion moving forward. So, Can what we is, do that before what, the what, amendment, what, what, what is the finish motion? the discussion? Of this first part, can we do that first? Well, I don't see why not, Councillor Berbu. Okay, let me put you in perspective, okay, this whole council. I worked as a lead pharmacist and manager of pharmacies for 35 years, okay? We did internships every year since I was in that business. You do not provide the criteria. The university requesting the internship from the University of Minnesota, North Dakota State University, any of the colleges, when you you agreed to put an intern on staff with them, following their criteria of what they want the student, student to learn while they're in your pharmacy, we don't develop that for them. They have it all written out for us and give it to us. And I did that for 35 years, one every year. Maybe not quite every year, but... Uh, uh, they provide that. We just agree in an agreement that we would have this intern, and then we would decide and do interviews, figure out who was going to do it, and decide on the salary on some of these where they allowed them what we would provide. Simple as that. That's all it worked. That's all it worked. I never put together in all those years an intern uh, uh, requisition for their education in the university because they need to follow certain criteria to pass their classes. Simple. So that's, that's how it worked.
Okay, thank you, uh, Councilor Barabu. Okay, uh, one more time, Pam, would you please read back the motion? Moved by Councilor Paulson, supported by Councilor Friedlieb to direct city staff to work on creating an internship program with the U of M as stated in the document that was provided by the U of M. So that's the original motion that was created. Is there a, 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 an I adjustment? I just removed the, room, the, the word program that we would work on the document together. Just like we won't create a program that if that's already existing in, in the other documents that we're missing that, that Jody brought up. What's, what's wrong with just accept the program that they provide? I mean, we don't need to develop it. We don't have a clue what they're looking for for this human and health uh, service. Just like, I didn't for, just like yeah. I didn't for pharmacy interns. It was provided what they wanted for an education on an internship by the university. We're not going to develop it. They do. Works. Okay, would you please continue, Councillor Paulson? Thank, Thank you. you. Um, on page seven of the document, Appendix A, it actually does state the criteria that, that is outlined, um, that the University of Minnesota Duluth Public Health Internship Educational Goals and Objectives are, and they, um, they give numbers assigned to those. So it's, it's already in there, so it would then just be, they already have the program, I understand that, but we need to understand what does the hours look like, or the parameters of that? And that's what I'm trying to get at. So whether I use the word program in a misinterpretive way, all I need to understand, the program is established as an internship. What, I, what we need to understand and establish is what are the hours, what is the, the criteria, you know, how long, how long of time frame does this internship exist? It exists as a blanket internship for five years. Now, for the candidate that's applying, that would be your ad attached ap applicant, how long is that? Those are the things that I'm trying to understand. And if that's something that's included, like Jody said, in the documents that she received five pages, then that's all we need. But if we don't have that and it's not included in the five pages, that's what I'm asking for. So we understand for budgetary planning what we can expect for an internship. That's basically, I'm not saying develop a program. The program's developed. It's in a chart right here. That's not, that's not what I meant when I said the actual program. I, I meant the back end of it for what makes sense fiscally to the city. So I don't know if you want to trans, how you can translate that differently in my motion I just want to move it forward so that we're working together to get it done. Okay, well, I think we just came full circle. Back to the original motion by Councilor Johnson, right? So. Now, I'm not ready to approve that. I want city staff to work on it and come back. That's my motion. Okay. All right. Uh, the, the motion is on the floor. One more time, read the motion. And I understand, you know, before you do, I understand this is the University of Minnesota program. They set the parameters to what's going to be the education requirements and responsibilities of the applicant for the internship program. But at the same time, when I worked in the public sector and I ran the internship program down at the Metropolitan Airports Commission within our organization, we had an internship policy which we don't have here at all. So I think that's the hang up. But uh, the original motion by Councilor Johnson to move it forward, uh, the only issue I have is, you know, I don't know if I want to uh, have an agreement for five years, but he's moving it forward for us to consider. So I think that's the motion that we just came back full circle on. Is that correct, Councilor Paulson? You're directing city staff to work with the University of Minnesota on, on the internship program, right? Yep, but it's not, it's, it's, we have to have a policy in place in a, in a way in which we're going to conduct the program. Okay. How, how much? I, how can I say that? Here's, here in my mind, I'm thinking, ask me is going to come to us and say, how is this any different than what Debbie Jetnick does there? What is this person doing? And I had better have that approval or that list of what this person is doing so that any of the unions that come to me and say, how is this any different than a union member? This is why it's different. 
because they are a student. They are only working this many hours a week. This, they get no unemployment. They get no benefits. They, so what would you call so, that document that I'm asking? Almost for. really a job description is what we're looking for, for an intern for the fire department. Then that's what I was, I don't know how else you want me to say that, Mayor. It's a job description for the intern. For the intern. Yep. yep. Okay. We have one for Tasia at the, at the library. We have very specific duties that she does. We don't let her do very. We don't let her do very specific things, and we require her to do very specific things. And we would have the same thing at the fire. So I would just leave it to have city staff work toward uh, toward coming to an agreement with with the University of Minnesota. Okay. Well, we have a lot more on the agenda, but I just have to add that this is. Um, you know, there's certain criteria that a student has to follow in order to meet their uh, credit requirements of the University of Minnesota. So for us to have some kind of a job description as to what that entails, it, it, you know, I understand uh, both sides of the fence, but this is an internship program, and it is an, an internships normally under this. <laughs> yes, but their internship program has to fit our duties. That's right. So we have to also be in alignment with what they need. So we need to get that document from them of what that what she needs for credit for her classes. Right. And then we need to be able to verify that it is not taking away union duties or union positions. Hmm. Yeah, so and there's that, a balance there we have to do. There is a thing. We do have to do something. We can't approve this quite yet until we have that information. And I was getting there. But thank you for that. Yep. I appreciate it. So the motion on the floor one more time and then we'll hopefully vote. Moved by Councillor Paulson, supported by Councillor Friedlieb to direct city staff to work on creating an internship program with the University of Minnesota, as stated in the document provided by the provided by the University of Minnesota. Okay, is it, and there's moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? I would like to change the word program to job description in the motion. You don't need that. Okay, there was a motion to what amend, do you, how do you amend the admission motion to to program, right? Well, every the hang up was program before. So we're, if we keep that in there, there's going to be a hung, hang up on program because we're not creating a program. We are creating a what? Okay, opportunity. You can substitute that word then, opportunity. Okay, so the motion is, again, again, is put the motion first, uh, the amended of the motion by the motion maker, and then we'll ask if the second uh, will uh, agree to the amended uh, uh, language. Moved by Councillor Paulson, supported by Councillor Friedlieb, to direct city staff to work on creating an internship opportunity with the University of Minnesota, stated in the document provided by the University of Minnesota. So that was the motion that was with the amended language uh, to opportunity. Uh, Councillor uh, Freelieb, are you uh, amenable to uh, make that um, um, amendment to uh, uh, change the word program to opportunity? Given that that's what he came here for us to do, I'm in full support of that. I'm, I'm on your frequency there. So has been moved and supported. It's basically this, oh, never mind, I moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? Uh, Councillor Baraboo. We've got one more. If you take a look what um, uh, Councillor uh, Paulson did on page 7, that, that explains everything, what the student has to do, what they're required to do, what they're supposed to do. We don't need a job description. It's, it's all there for them, uh, for what the university is going to require for an internship. I've never been in an internship where you create the document. We would create if we're going to have payment, if we're going to make sure there's no duties that interfere with the union and stuff. There's nothing that I can read in this criteria on these pages that's going to interfere with any union. It's all there for us. We're not the ones providing the education of this patient, other or not patient, this person, except what we provide uh, from the criteria that the university requires their individual student uh, to bring back in, in documentation to their classroom. That's how it works. Why do we need a job description for because that person? Because who is, who is supervising this employee? Who do they report to every day? Who is going to do the monitoring those paperwork? Type, those type those things, things need to be worked out in that things, description. Yes, yes. yes. Where do they sit? What are the hours of work? What do they do when they're there? 
That, but that is not a job description. It's that's, close enough. I mean, that's what kind of what well, we that's need. That's a bunch of BS. Yeah. So. And I don't. What do you want to call it, Councilor Barry? I mean, you call call it the program that the university has provided to you. I understand of, that of the information that they need. But for they their need students. information from us. They're going to ask that's us. That's where I'm saying you're way ahead of the curve. You need to talk to the university. Well, and, I'll get and, that. Yes, and that gal before we make any stupid motions. We can do that all on council meeting the next time. You I need, need, to have I need permission or, to do that. Or that's, two weeks. That's, that's exactly where we were at. We can, simply, we can give you that permission to go to the university and talk call to them for the what you actually need. You can't call for the question without a vote. That's that's Robert's rules. Uh, uh, Councilor Barbu. Okay, let's just uh, let's just calm down. It's, okay. It's crazy. You guys, how many of you worked with in, internships in the past? How many of you? Okay. Many. Ask, ask what they do. Who provides the criteria for most internships? The individual, individual university or, uh, or school that is requesting the internship, they provide the information, what the student needs to learn in their internship. Yes, they provide the goals that they need to learn. We give them specifics. Like in Tasia's document, we gave specifics on how she's going to reach those goals. If you're going to pay them, if you're not going to pay them, if you have right. rules of, of hours, those type of things. Yes, I understand. Okay. Call for the question. Uh, Pam, would you please read the motion one more time? Moved by Councillor Paulson, supported by Councillor Friedleib to direct city staff to work on creating an internship, internship opportunity with the University of Minnesota, as stated in the document that was provided by the University of Minnesota. As was stated in the first motion. Is there any further discussion? Hearing and seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Chief, have a cup of coffee, relax. And thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Rudabish, for us. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. Still more time to go. Thank you. We'll figure it out. Item number eight is approve the resolution to hire, rehire John Hodgkins as a patrol officer and authorize the execution of a memorandum understanding for the lateral transfer. So he's coming back. Okay. So moved. Moved to approve by Councillor Johnson. Is there support? Uh, the motion is uh, by Councillor Johnson to approve the resolution to rehire John Hodgkins as a patrol officer and authorize the execution of the memorandum of understanding for lateral transfer. And this was uh, discussed by staff, approved by and recommended by the city, by the chief of police. And so it has been moved. Is there support? I'll support, support Mayor. I'll I'll support uh, by Councillor Freelieb. Is there any further discussion? A hearing and seeing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. The next item is the preliminary review of the proposed MAP position description of the Community Development Coordinator. I have met with MAPE, and this is what we've kind of come up with. The job description really was kind of geared towards MAPE all along. We just made a few changes to the leadership. As Amanda Metzler reminded us yesterday, if we do go forward with this, we have to write an official letter to AFSCME asking for them to release the position from AFSCME and allowing us to put it in MAPE. Hey, very good. Thank you. So, Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Uh, Councilor Barabu. So, but you basically need to get authorization to write the letter to, to the uh, asking. You asked me asking for release. That's the first thing. That's the need. first step. And if they do not release, then we go ask, I ask the council to allow me to contact the Bureau of Mediation Services to ask for a reclassification. You want that all in one motion or is two separate motions? Um, let's do two separate. Let's just do the one motion first to send the letter to ask me. I will move that we authorize uh, our city administrator to send a letter to ask me releasing this person to the MAP uh, union. Uh, moved by Councillor Baraboo, supported by Art. Councillor Johnson. Further discussion? Councillor Johnson, and then over to Councillor Paulson. Councillor Johnson. Thank you. But haven't we changed the position, or is it because, is it a technicality at this point? It doesn't matter. If, even if we try to move, this position did change, but we're still trying to move it out of, we can write, that could be in our letter as we feel it's different, and that okay. we want to leave it in there, but we still have to approach the process. And Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, any other further discussion, Councillor Paulson? Thank you, and not to just subvert the process, but um, my question is, if we rewrite a job description that fits into a supervisory job description, which can be done in which we, I think, directed staff to, um, to do that, can we uh, just not fill the AFSCME position? Can't we just, 
I'm not trying to subvert the process, but can't we just leave that position open and uh, do a new job description for the new position in which we feel it is best suited and leave the asking position open while creating a new MAPE position? And that would be our letter, exactly. What we would say is that our intent is to leave the asking position right where it is. We are going to take this job description and modify it to MAPE, and we are going to create a position there. So the letter, though, in, in what the motion is, is that um, requesting permission from the council. ASME? We'll, we'll talk to, we'll write that letter. If this is the council agrees, we're going to leave that one and ask me. We're going to write the letter saying... We are going to create a new position with the intent to leave the other one alone. Okay. So it's not asking permission for them to release it. We're just saying and they our have intent. the right to say, no, it's too similar. We want to review. Okay. And we would go from so, there if they do. Okay. But. Okay. I understand. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Then the next step is the BMS. Correct. Then the next step would be the Bureau of Mediation. Okay, so it has been moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? Mayor, that was my intent exactly what uh, Britt said for the motion, so. For the discussion, Councilor Barbo? Yeah, that, that when I made the motion to uh, approve this uh, going to, from, uh, to ask me with a letter, it was with the understanding that there would be a job description. This is the new job description, correct, Britt? Yes, yep. Okay, yep. that's all, basically, and that's what I think I said, didn't I, Pam? What did I say with the motion? To allow staff to send a letter to ask me to release the position for the community development coordinator and allowing it to move to MAP union. Yeah, that's what I asked. It has been moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? We have a quorum present. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Um, the next item on the agenda is a request for a city hall, library, um, park and rec office staff, and the public works office staff to attend a mandatory day of training on January 19th. The trainings that are listed on the, on the agenda item are OSHA required trainings, except for um, the data practices. That's just, a, that's just a good update for everybody. Um, but if we get all of our training done in one day, then our staff doesn't have to try to to get it done in future months and it's really just difficult to schedule it over throughout the whole year so it's really nice for us to have a one-day training session we're done for the year all the staff that attends is okay and okay thank you i'll move to approve move to approve by councillor paulson is there support 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 by councillor beyond is there any further discussion a hearing and seeing none all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. opposed motion carries Thank you. Item number 11 is a approval resolution to hire recreation assistants, and this is actually the outdoor rink attendant recreation assistants who work the seasonal shift at the outdoor rinks for $14.80 per hour. Hey, thank you. Moved, moved to approve by Councilor Freely. Is there support? Support. Support by Councilor Biondich. Is there any further discussion? Hearing and seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item number 14 is approve the contract for the independent contractor agreement for public access television. And no changes in that agreement? There was no changes. So moved. Moved to approve by Councillor Johnson. Is there support? Support, support by Councillor Freely. Is there any further discussion? Uh, hearing Councillor uh, Paulson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so I do have a question. Um, we've been getting, uh, I still get feedback that people cannot find us live streaming or find us on our on our YouTube channel, but are now finding it on, I think this was a post on Facebook, on Masaba TV. And so I went back, I'm, I'm usually on, because I know we have one constituent who has, um, she's handicapped and really relies on YouTube. She, I don't think she has cable access any longer. Um, but anyway, I went back to our YouTube and I, it's like eight months are gone. So I don't know, um, if they're all being loaded onto Masaba TV. Um, but I'm, I guess I used to follow up with that, the YouTube thing a lot more closely than I have been. Um, but yes, there have been live streaming issues and yes, now it seems that there are issues with archiving and where, like if you go on, um, there's three tabs. You can click video, playlist, and then live. 
And I did click this morning. It was live streaming when I clicked when we began the meeting or I would have uh, approach the subject right right from the beginning, but um, I'm concerned that I don't know if there's language in here for what we are paying forty eight thousand two hundred dollars a year if they are maintaining our proper archiving and archival of our YouTube videos on the city of Virginia's YouTube site. So, do you know if that is currently being is currently happening? Or are they going on to Misabi.tv or whatever that YouTube channel is? Um, the one specific meeting I know you're talking about was on the Misabi channel. I'm looking back there at our archive are, right I, now. It, It's like almost they're gone. I'm looking at the archive right now, and it's November 22nd, 15th, 9th, the 1st, the 25th. 19th. So you're seeing the most current ones? Yeah. And I'm on my phone while I'm searching, so I don't know if there's an optimization from... Uh, maybe there's a phone okay. we'll issue. We'll talk to Steve. Uh, Pam, Pam, will you remind me to talk to Steve about this, too? We'll talk to him and see what we can yeah, do. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm always just on my phone when I when I check, but I do periodically get people that are telling me I can't find it, it, it hasn't live-streamed, and I don't know where to look. Um, so if that, I don't know if that's included in his agreement. It, I don't think it really talks about anything with our archive or YouTube services or who owns that content. You know, I didn't read it as closely as I should have, but I don't see anything in here. I don't know if we need to add anything additional to that, um, but that's just, a, it's a concern that keeps coming up with people who are trying to find our meetings and are having, for whatever reason, either issues or maybe they're like me and are, they're just on their phone and can't find it. Right. Yeah. So if that could be addressed, that would be great. Uh, thank you. I've got part of a contract here, but I... Uh, it says here the independent contractor may his discretion to develop an interest presence, including live and on-demand streaming at his own expense and control. Such avenues of broadcast may be available for the public at an added cost to each program producer. Councilor uh, uh, Johnson might have some insight. Yes, thank you. I have some answers for you, Councilor Paulson. Um, YouTube does its own stuff for the most part, but if you, when you're on the desktop version, if you click on playlists, there are 243 videos on the City of Virginia YouTube channel. So it very well could be a challenge with the phone and how YouTube does that. But but if you go to the YouTube um, homepage, you, City of Virginia Min, um, home videos live playlists, you click on playlists, and there's seven with information, and I am happen to be looking at Deputy uh, uh, Chief Nicola and his parking video here, but right next to it is 240. It's, it's, they they com, come together as a playlist. So there's 243 videos, which would be about how many videos we've probably put since we went to YouTube. So that might be um, a, something to look at on a phone. And it, it could depend on if you're using an Apple product or a non-Apple product too for that population and, and seeking that stuff. I will state, if I may address that, I will state that in the past, it's always archived just fine on my phone. And if you see on my phone right now, it's seven months ago, that's on the playlist. So it's not, so if we could talk to him about uh, optimization on that, but I don't necessarily, know that I agree with what's that contract language that they can take the city's content and use it for their personal or private business usage. Um, is that the language that's within that contract? And if so, should we have our city attorney review that to make sure that um, that's something in fact we want done? With, with all the different capabilities, I mean, maybe back when the contracts were written, there weren't capabilities for a city to archive its own and own its own archive. But now that YouTube exists, that, con that might be something obsolete in the contract. So I don't know if we want to review that, but I would, I would be comfortable in doing a review before we approve by our city attorney. Thank you. Yeah, we have a motion on the floor. I'll read you back the motion, please. Moved by Councilor Johnson, supported by Councilor Friedlieb to approve the contract for the independent contractor for public 
Access Television with Stephen Rocola. Okay, moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? Hearing and seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Aye, opposed? No. No. Roll call, please. Johnson? Aye. Aaron Sally is absent. Cuffey? Aye. Baraboo? No. Reedlieb? Aye. Paulson? No. Beyondich? No. Motion fails. Three to three. So we need another motion. I'll move to um, direct our city attorney to review the contract along with our city administrator to review um, portions of our YouTube uh, channel live streaming uh, process as well as um, I'll, I'll just leave it at that. We'll move by Councillor Paulson. Is there support? Support by Councillor Baraboo. Any further discussion? Um, uh, uh, hearing and seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Next item. Next item on the agenda is review of the proposed rental code. The Planning and Zoning Commission has looked at it numerous times. We've had the public hearings again, and now they're bringing forward their final recommendation for you to review. Okay, I've had an opportunity to read this over on a number of occasions. Uh, there's some issues here that I still need to be, I think should be included in there, but I'll hold that in abeyance. I did read through John Sullivan's notes with respect to that and the reasons why we have to make these changes and some of the amendments that were moved in there. I agree that uh, he did a great job putting that forward together. I thank the, uh, the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission for taking a look at that moving forward and for our staff and their hard work on this. Uh, there are gaps in there, I think, that uh, could be filled. But overall, I think it's a, a good ordinance. It's based on sound uh, in, uh, investigation and uh, using other uh, communities as an example of their successes in that regard. So uh, that being said, I'll move on to us, uh, other uh, comments from the council. Councilor Johnson. Thank you. Uh, Britt, is the proposed ski fee schedule is in, is that part of the ordinance or will we do that separately as a? Met last night. Okay. So they will be coming with an updated fee, or fee schedule that would be passed as a resolution. So anytime we have to make a change, we don't have to go through the ordinance process. We just have to pass a resolution. That's exactly what I was hoping you say. And then I have one specific question. Oh, under other related fees will be charged when incurred operating without a license penalty, $500 each. So does that mean if there's a rent a rental unit and they don't have a license, they're going to pay $500 and it's done? I mean, I want to make sure that they're understanding that this is... It's actually a misdemeanor as well. Pardon me? It's a misdemeanor as well. But how... When does the next $500 charge come? Like, I'm, I'm looking at... So they, how it would do be we, the $500 plus the license fee that they need to pay. Yep. And then every year when it renews... Annually. Again, yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, that's the clarification. And the, and the misdemeanor. So uh, is it, is there a way to make that clear um, where it says operating? I am on page. Uh, yeah, it would be clearer when we have the documentation and the, the, the inspection sheets, the notices we send out, okay. we would explain to them failure to do this could result in fines of up to X amount of dollars in addition to your permit fee, you know, that. And it'll be in the definitions also Correct. of the ordinance. Yeah. Okay. I, I just can see kind of having an idea. Well, I already paid my $500 last year. I'm not, but it, it'll be annually. It matter. That's, yeah. could be annually. Okay, and thank a you. a misdemeanor is a ticket. So then it would require you to go to court. And okay, thank you. And, and uh, to make it clear, we're reviewing this ordinance right now. Just, 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 review. A, just a review. Yeah, not to I will take have action. it updated. They did update the rental... Um, fees so yesterday, so we'll have that for the well, we have so far. council. Right, good, thank you. Uh, any other questions uh, from the council on the review process for the rental corridors? Additional information and final uh, 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 request for adoption will be forthcoming. Hey, does anybody have anything else to add to that at this time? 
Councilor Paulson. Thank you, Mayor. There's a few times um, that it's referenced the Minnesota State Building Code is actually referenced. Would it be possible to give the, the actual reference within the state code um, just as a, as a notation of where it was coming from? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Councilor Paulson. Okay, anybody else? Anyone else have questions? Um, no, okay. Continue to review until we get an updated uh, uh, with the fee schedule and the other uh, uh, items to be uh, added uh, for final approval. Okay, uh, next item, please. Thank you. The next item is discuss city's labor negotiation strategy for labor negotiations with IAFF, which is the firefighters union. And this portion of the meeting may be closed as Minnesota statute 13D05. So division three. Okay, are you requesting that this uh, be closed for discussion? Yes, and if we're gonna close the meeting, we might as well just roll into the other ones as well. Discuss the purchase of real estate in Virginia, which is, there's two parts, two agreements we need to discuss. The various properties owned by Masabi Property Management and then the purchase agreement for a portion of 13th Street South that is owned by Trinity Lutheran Church that we need for the right of way for the 2023 street improvement project. And then the final item is a closed session pursuant to Minnesota Statutes 13D05, Subdivision 3B, for attorney-client privilege pending litigation. Thank you. And uh, for those uh, who are listening on the YouTube channel, we're going to close session because of the law authorizes and requires us to do so with respect to negotiation processes. So uh, we are going to entertain a motion uh, to close uh, for the items that were previously listed by our city uh, administrator. Looking for a motion to go to closed session. Also oh, moved, Mayor. Moved by Councillor Barabo and supported by Councillor Johnson. No. No, okay, not supported by Councillor Johnson. A move by Councillor Barabo. Is there support to go into closed session? Support by Councillor Freely. Further discussion? Councillor Johnson. I, I would like to bring up one other thing under the items of concern before we close the session. As okay, we'll hold the um, we'll hold the motion and the uh, support to close the session and held all those in advance until you address your issue, Councillor Johnson. Thank you. Um, I just it's the end of the year and it's time to look at an MOU with Friends of the Greenhouse. And I know that's on our board agenda for this evening, so I'd like to make a motion to authorize staff to. Um, discuss the uh, MOU with Friends of the Greenhouse moving for next year. Okay, motion by Councilor Johnson to uh, uh, have the council review or staff review, as it was a staff review? Staff to have staff that review discussion. Of the MOU with respect to the uh, Friends of the Greenhouse. Is there support? Support by Council Freely. Is there any further discussion? Uh, hearing and seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. We'll bring back the motion on the floor to go into closed session. It has been moved and supported to do so. Is there any further discussion? Uh, hearing and seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Thank you. We're now going into closed session. <laughs> 